while the Galactic Empire expanded its power and began absorbing neighboring star systems. Some of the outer frontier planets maintained independent governments. The third planet in the Tau Ceti system, Sea of the Morning Star, was a newly settled frontier planet. As with most newly settled planets, once generations passed and its population increased, relations with its overseer, the Stellar Alliance, worsened, and a war of independence began. To complement their meager fleet, the government of Sea of the Morning Star issued a new type of edict, the Letter of Mark. Papers in hand, space pirates attacked Stellar Alliance vessels, greatly contributing to the revolution's success. This story begins more than 100 years later, the war having ended in surprising fashion. Time for some piracy! acceleration she's fine assuming she leaves orbit right now she'll overshoot it probably land straight in the ocean you don't think she's trying to cut it too close do you she was too quick on the reverse thrusters for that the type who tries to cut it perfectly close is always late on the thrusters what's she thinking look at you mr great pilot can't you even discern a rookie's thoughts what does she think she's doing? She's maximizing her profile to increase her rate of deceleration. That will let her decelerate quickly without burning any propellant. Arrow breaking. Where did she learn a rudimentary trick like that? <laughs> Scary kid. It's pretty rude to call her a kid. After all, she is his daughter. Her ability to do that doesn't surprise me at all. Landing location confirmed. No problems with pilot or ship. I'll skip the check and briefings for now. I'll be leaving early today. Goodbye. Good work. We should get going as well. Come on, let's move out. Don't you want to know where she's going? Where she's going? so it's actually pretty cheap. Peaceful. Oh, I'll be with you in a moment. Good afternoon. Have you two decided on your order? Yes. Cold brewed coffee, please. Could you tell us what the specials are? Sure. The South Alicia Classic Tea. Can you recommend something else? The Jasmine Tea has grown well this year. If you weren't from around here, I'd definitely recommend it. Then we'll take that. Thank you very much. Cold brew coffee and the jasmine tea. Got it. That girl learned all the daily specials as soon as she got here. Then I guess she's a good waitress. Huh. Please, drink the rest while it's still hot. Enjoy your drinks. Marika Kato. Uh, that's me. Sorry, have we by any chance met before? Well, I've never met you before. 
But I'm an old friend of your mother's from long ago. You're quite similar. I am? I see, that makes total sense. Thank you very much. Have you ever been into space? Huh? Yes. Up to the relay station for my school club. The yacht club? You've heard of us? Our yacht club maintains a private section at this station. I go up there sometimes to work on the practice ships. I see. That's amazing. Have you ever considered viewing the planet from farther away? Not just from satellite orbit, but from outer space. From space? That'd be nice. today who said that they knew you. Knew me? Who? Oh, I don't know. But they, they asked me if I'd ever want to see the planet from outer space. So maybe they work in space? Huh? <sighs> I see. I guess they arrived sooner than I expected. But it'll be fine. Seas of space. Belong to me. I knew it. The minute you brought it up, I knew it had to be you. Are those people wearing costumes? We don't have to stand around talking. Come sit down. Thanks, Verica. We appreciate the hospitality. But first, I must tell you something. The captain of the Benton Maru, Gonzo Mankoto, has passed away. Me too? You don't have to drink it, but today is special. Tonight, at least, we must raise a glass to that good-for-nothing. May Captain Gonzamon live in our memories and find his place among the stars. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was just two days ago. I didn't hear of any battles important enough to make news. So after everything that old sea dog went through, I have to know what finally did the old man in. Food poisoning. Food poisoning? He got food poisoning and that was that. I told him to stop eating stuff he picked up off the ground. And so, when did you say they confirmed his death? Two days ago, Galactic Standard Time. No, 20 seconds ago, it became three days. To our good-for-nothing captain. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of wine left. Glad to hear it. Anyway, I'm impressed you were able to find my house. You thought you could simply live here unnoticed? Yep. That optimism of yours hasn't changed at all. I'm sure that this wouldn't have been Captain Kato's first choice either, but... What? Uh huh? huh? All right now, then. You are Captain Gonzamon's eldest child, Marika Kato, and we are here to have a word with you. Uh, yeah. May I say something? Yes. You keep talking about this Gonzamon captain person. Who is that? <gasps> Marika, you never told her? I forgot all about it. Until just now. Gonzamon Kato was my husband. Your father. Huh? How would you like to captain the space pirate ship, the Benton Morrow? Uh... What? <laughs> the 
The only one who can be captain is the previous one's direct descendant. And right now you are Captain Kato's sole daughter in the universe. You are the only one who can become captain of the Benton Mario. So... Wait! Wait a second! My dad was a pirate?! What do you mean, pirate?! A space pirate. You've heard of them. But... But that's ancient history! They were part of the War of Independence or something. That was a long, long time ago. They're gone now, right? No one ever said they were gone. We are real-life pirates, crew of the spaceship the Binden Mario. I'm the medic, and he's the helmsman. Uh, Hi there! Uh, hey, are the three of you trying to pull a trick on me or something here? I get it, this is some kind of prank! Oh, Rerika, you never explained anything to her. I was waiting for the right time! <gasps> what? You wanted to go into space, right? If you become captain of the Benton Mario, you will go anywhere you wish. No! No! Sorry, but I refuse to do something that would make me a criminal! Don't worry about that. Huh? We have an official pirating license called the Letter of Mark. It's all completely above board. We're legal pirates. LEGAL PIRATES?! <laughs> Actually, who ever heard of a legal pirate? <sighs> Letters of Mark. The captain of the space pirate ship perished in an unfortunate accident. The Benton Maru's pirating license is in a grace period. It's true. You really are legal pirates. Time for some piracy! Rurika san! Hmm. Take your time and think it over. <sighs> what is it? Up all night studying? Hey, Mommy. Have you ever heard of space pirates? What's that? For history? <sighs> it sounds like it. Of course that's what you would think. Anyway, did you hear the news today, Marika? The new teacher is totally a guy! Really? For which class? What? The replacement teacher for our class! And he's young! So, they already chose one. That was fast. Totally! Our school's pretty famous. They were probably extra strict with their interviews this time. But it's only been a week, hasn't it? And he's supposed to be pretty cute. Huh? Oh. Taking over for Mr. Kipling, who's in the hospital following last week's accident. My name is Kane McDougal. Pleasure to meet you all. Strict interviews, I'm sure. Also, I hate to disappoint all of you lovely ladies, but I'm married. Aww. Additionally, I have one more announcement. Kuriara-san, come in. Chiaki Kurihara-san. Her parents are transferring from the Uzumasa star system, so she's come here from the Sea of the Forest Star branch of our school. Oh, wow. My name is Chiaki Kurihara. Nice to meet you all. She's so cute. I'm sure that it will be confusing for all of you with both a new teacher and transfer student, but it's nearly summer vacation. <laughs> Jackie son have a seat. Right over there, will you? Yes. She's kind of cool. And cute, too.
Okay, I'll take attendance. Who'd want to teach at a girl's high school? Oh, and here I thought it would be every guy's greatest dream. I take that back. <laughs> so, did you get a chance to take a look at the students' data? Lots of potential candidates. A talented gamer. One who was arrested in middle school for computer crimes. What kind of girl's school is this? What about this one? A transfer student at this time of year. She's from your class. Chiaki Kurihara. So she... Wants to join the Yacht Club? That's very suspicious. Almost as suspicious as we are. We can have the Benton Morrow look into her. And Mr. Kane here will keep his eye on the little lady. I'm counting on you. So, how's the Yacht Club? They're off today for a server check. The young captain is at her part-time job. <gasps> oh crap! I forgot! Make yourself at home! Marika, aren't we getting some unusual customers today? Uh, uh, uh. We'll sit there. Huh? Yeah, that's her. Come to think of it, you're right. Don't mess this up, you hear me? Welcome, gentlemen. So, are you ready to order? showing off? Uh, or do you simply not understand things? Um, what are you talking about? Kazo-san, take some coffee to the guests outside. Uh, okay, Mami-chan, please take Korihara-san's order. So sorry. Um, do you all know each other? We do. What would you like? Hmm. <gasps> uh, chocolate parfait. One delicious chocolate parfait. No, hey! <laughs> it's going to melt. Uh, our chocolate parfait is really good. Join the yacht club? It's too bad we were off today. Make yourself at home. Tell me something. Why in the world are you working at a place like this? I am scheduled for today. Do you fail to understand your position? Huh? Mm. Uh, Marika? Uh. Marika Kato? Yes, that's me. I'm from New Oklahoma Airport. Air Traffic Control Officer Ririka Kato, your mother, requested emergency protection for you. Ririka-san? Mm -hmm. There's been a problem at the relay station. I'll explain the details in the car. Yeah, <laughs> right. Airport security is providing emergency protection instead of the police force? Don't even bother. No need to continue this farce.
What did you do? Didn't you see? I fired a signal round. Huh? Don't worry. The cartridge was old, so it doesn't have the extreme power of a normal flash round. Why did you do that? Let's go. I want to talk to you somewhere a little farther away. What? Kidnapping? I'm not quite sure of their affiliation, but surely you could tell they were intent on grabbing you, right? Who knows where they would have taken you if you'd been stupid enough to follow. But why would they do that? You don't know? Because you're Marika Kato. Huh? By the way, your customers were very likely... Military intelligence, a police task force, stellar military ops, and perhaps some space mafia enforcer squads. That would-be kidnapper is probably getting beat up by them as we speak. But, it's his own fault though. What were all those people doing there? You don't know? Uh, it's because they were all sent to watch you. After all, you'll very likely become the captain of the Benton Maru. Korihara-san, do you know- Thank you for the dessert. You appear to have a lot of questions. Of course I do! Well then, aren't there already people you could ask? But Your ride is here. Is everyone at the lamp house okay? Don't worry. They're all fine. Marika-chan is all right. Oh, oh, <laughs> Tell everyone I'll be right back. We know you're safe now, so you should just run along home, Marika. No! I left my stuff there, and I haven't changed, and... And? I have one customer to ring up. Goodbye! Son? Don't you have work or something? If you say your daughter's been caught in the middle of a gunfight, usually the bosses will let you go home early. It must have been tough. I'd planned to tell you when you graduated. Are you mad? Am I mad? About the pirates? About being captain? And everything else about your father? More like surprised. About the pirates, sure I am. But also to find out that dad was alive and he only died recently. I'm sorry. No, it isn't like that. The stuff about my dad just doesn't feel real. I'm surprised at myself for not feeling anything. <sighs> I see. Too. I saw a few pictures of you. So you did your homework, huh? That's right. I was on the Benton Maru. Uh, so why were you a pirate? I was born out in space. The first thing I knew was being on a spaceship. That's about it. But that's... <laughs> it's probably impossible for you to imagine. But people like that do exist. People who made a place for themselves in space. They're like sailors, really. Let's go on a little trip. Huh? We'll drop off the bike at home and then go. I'd like to get some things together, too. you tell, silly? They're guns. But, but why do you have to have all of these? The police will arrest you. They're for self-defense. 
The police and the military let it slide. That's some pretty big stuff they're letting slide. Yeah. This might be good for our first fireworks. Put these on. It'll blind you. I'm gonna fire it. Long time. The recoil on this kicks like a cannon. I love it. So wanna try? <laughs> I wouldn't start you off with something so huge. Start with something small. Actually, this one's plenty big. The Armor Light Armor Penetrating Beam Gun. I remember this one. They used to give it to me for work. Hold it like that and there's less recoil. Do you know why pirates boarding other ships take guns with them? Do you? I don't know. To fight? No. They do it to impress. Impress? That's correct. 90% of the time, a fight is decided before the first trigger is pulled. However, if you set a gun to full power and pull the trigger, someone will die, or it might be you who dies. In the police or the military, so long as you follow orders, you needn't consider such things. However, pirates must decide for themselves whether to pull the trigger. That is the power of a pirate. Power of a pirate. in your hands right now is raw power. Huh? If you become captain of the Bentamaru, you'll be pulling the trigger of an even greater power. But I still haven't decided what I'm going to do. I still don't know yet. You don't have to decide right now. Huh? It's in your blood, my dear. You already have the heart and the resolve required to decide. This power is yours alone. My power. Hi, my name is Kane McDougal, your new club advisor. Hello, everyone. out on a practice cruise then? Yeah. You could just see their eyes sparkle when I told those pretty young girls I have a large ship license. <laughs> We're going to do an onboard check over the long weekend. We'll leave after closing ceremonies. So that's the reason Hakame sent over these schematics. Yeah, a while ago. I asked him to. It's huge, so I was wondering about it. Hmm, let's see... Solar Sailor? 200 years old? It was an experimental craft, then a transport, then an exploratory vessel. And during the War of Independence, <gasps> it was an armed merchant vessel and a camouflaged cruiser? This is one of the ancient pirate ships known as the Original Seven, the Hakachu. Seriously? A girl's school has a pirate ship? Ah, so this beauty is the Odette 2. 
Yes, the Odette 2 is the Yacht Club's practice ship. But the size of this hangar, it's on a completely different scale. It's just for this ship's use. There's nothing else they can do with it, so it's supposedly quite inexpensive. Well, on the surface, anyway. Sorry? Oh, nothing, really. Welcome aboard! Okay, the hatch is open. Thank you. We're ready when you are, Captain. <laughs> Cut that out. I'll inspect the exterior before I come aboard. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So a pre-fly check, naturally. Everyone get inside first. Begin inspection of your assigned area. Right! right. That's some thick armor, and on a girls' school practice ship. <laughs> The hull looks fine. How about inside? Ah! Hurry, hurry! Hi, Roger! What? Hurry, hurry, hurry! Hey, now. Advisor! I've finished checking the life support circulation system. It looks like it's all clear. Mess Hall's refrigeration system's functioning properly. Roger that. Keep going with your inspections. Yes, yes sir. Ah! This is zero gravity. Calm down. Ah, yes, sir. Is she a kid? I guess she is just a kid. Now, the bridge, huh? I have a bad feeling. going what are you thinking me what do you mean becoming our advisor and taking us on this practice cruise what are you planning huh i'll have you know your upperclassmen were the ones who suggested the cruise uh. and this is all a coincidence it was coincidence that i joined the yacht club and coincidence you were there what a coincidence hmm. lucky if you stop and think about it Okay, everyone. The final central computer update has been completed. I'm cutting power to the bridge and rebooting all systems in a moment. Before I do that, has everyone finished? All done over here. I'm finished here. See right there? Uh, we're, we're good. good. All set to go right here. This is bridge to C-68 portside. Can you hear me? This is portside. We hear you. We're rebooting the main bridge right now. Bridge side, final inspection. Cutting pier side external power in approximately three seconds. Three, two, and one. External power cut. Did it shut down? Cut confirmed. You need to reconnect the power when I count down from ten. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. ships this way? Not at all. We've been doing it standalone until today because we were still using the old system. We're currently doing things around here a bit rougher than usual since we're updating navigation. A bit rougher, huh? Advisor! Someone is here to see you! Oh. Bye! Uh. <clears throat> Tell me, how's the new student, Mr. Faculty Advisor? <laughs> Such a good student. I'm impressed. And the piloting skills aren't bad either, you know. Oh. Well, that little girl must be pretty good for you to say that. Yeah. But being a captain isn't about piloting skill. That's true. But if she's a good pilot, she can anticipate the ship's movement as well as adjust for the atmosphere. That's a good thing. I guess so. 
and she'll be sailing one of the survivors of the legendary Original Seven, just like our Benton Maru. I'm looking forward to our practice cruise. <laughs> is that pirate teacher thinking? Talking about the duty roster? Ah! Does it actually matter? It isn't all that unusual for first years to be grouped together after all. Or perhaps, maybe he's trying to figure out what my motives are by pairing the two of us together. Um, thanks. For what? Thanks for saving me. Earlier, I never said thanks. I never had the chance with all the running. I didn't save you. I simply couldn't bear to watch. Yeah, they call that saving a person. No, they don't! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? A lot of people are trying to break in from the outside. Huh? The ship isn't standalone. It's connected to the network at the moment. So, of course, it's being attacked externally. The Odette 2 is under electronic attack? That's what I'm saying, yes. From where? Who'd go after a girls' school practice ship? It isn't worth making a big deal over. At the moment, it's merely auto-patrolling robots and spam viruses. <sighs> oh, just typical cyber attacks, then. I hope it stays that way. I feel like someone else is making an attempt. The basic idea of electronic warfare is to take over the enemy's system before they notice. So that's what you were up to. Do you know who it is? I can't tell right now. I wish I could. I think what? I'll try my hand at electronic warfare. Wait! No! Oh. I went too far. Do you even know how to use this equipment? Nope. Nope. It's reacting to something. <gasps> I thought so. It's synchronized to the external communication. External? The ship's antenna. But the long-range main antenna is still folded up. The short-range external antenna? But it isn't sensitive enough to do anything. Oh, a, a direct, direct cable! cable. The electronic attacks aren't coming from the outside. They're inside the station. That appears to be correct. Okay. We'll narrow down the comm system filters to the direct lines we're wired into. Found you! The ships that are docked here... The D-Block docking port. Huh? The infiltration protocol is being posted from the D-Block docking port. Wait a second. There are 15 ships at that port. Roger. <laughs> port 117. Port 117. The Lightning 11 is docked at Port 117. It docked four days ago. No scheduled launch date. Hmm. Too obvious. What I don't understand is why a simple transport has its large antenna unfolded like that. Mm -hmm. oh! I'm gonna try this. Uh, do you know what electronic warfare is? Nope, I don't. Only computers equipped for cyber warfare can boot up. They're attacking via cable, right? So we should fight too. Are you insane? An amateur can't engage in electronic warfare. Let's pull the calm cable. Tomorrow, we can explain the situation to Kane Sensei. That won't work! It'll be too late! If you lose an electronic warfare, you lose control of your ship, right? Even I understand that concept. If they're trying to do something that awful to the ship, we have to counterattack. We must teach them a lesson, or they'll just do it again. I'm gonna... Don't blame me for what happens. <laughs> Just so we're clear, I don't know much about electronic warfare either. You're pretty decisive, to be honest. It's really not something I was expecting at all. Because it's something I'm good at! <laughs> Make the best decision you can, and believe in it. 
are various strategies employed by space pirates. Some involve frontal assaults, guns blazing. Some involve waiting in ambush. Some use boarding parties in man-to-man -man combat. But regardless which is used, bringing the enemy ship's systems under your control is critical. Electronic warfare is a quiet battle fought without guns or hand-to-hand -hand combat. The losing ship cedes control of its life support systems to the enemy. Don't blame me for what happens. Make the best decision you can. Uh... <clears throat> what? I think we need something to get started, you know? What kind of something? Maybe begin operation or something like that. Electronic warfare isn't a gunfight. You wait quietly, leaving the enemy alone. And then, keeping your guard up, you sneak in. It probably isn't what you think it is. Well, you've never done it either, right, Chiaki-chan? Uh, Chiaki-chan? All right, then. I'm booting up the Odette 2's electronic warfare system. <laughs> if we get totally outmatched, we pull the plug. Won't that break it? You can't engage in electronic warfare if you're going to be that hesitant. Listen. Uh, no way. Huh? It's begun communicating on its own. What? Uh, wait. Where's it connecting to? It's connecting to a major database somewhere. The Stellar Military Records Division? Uh, huh? Automatic defenses. Could this be? I knew it. Every single one of these attacks are one-way communications to the D-Block docking port. What does that mean? When the electronic warfare computer system booted up, it started fighting the enemy, I think. Uh, 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 what's this? Oh no. All power is being routed to the electronic warfare system. It's drawing four times as much power. Pipe time? Wow! It's retaking the system! Keep going! Just keep going! Would you keep stop going? cheering and help me? Huh? What the... The dockside breaker tripped. This system has a bigger appetite than we anticipated. We almost won, too. It's safely reactivated. Is power also back on inside the ship? Probably. I think that next time we'll need to have the school increase the power to this ship. Before that... <laughs> You're in charge of our excuse. I wonder what we should say. <laughs> So, she accidentally pressed the switch, did she? That's impressive. Yup. Hmm. And just what happened to the attacking cargo ship? They panicked and ran away. Don't know where to. Oh. Smart move. The practice cruise is still ahead. This time they were probably just looking. Not that it matters, but you're pretty relaxed today. Is the yacht club okay? The upperclassmen are drawing up the Odette 2's flight plan. The lowerclassmen are working on the yacht simulator. It's better if these young ladies learn to stand on their own rather than having a new advisor show them everything. Stand on their own, huh? Finals are coming up pretty soon now. So I think we should give them some room. Right, right. <laughs> Here you go. Your fans aren't back, so it's pretty slow. You want them back? So you could call them, huh? Uh, why would I? Chiki Chan! Drop the Chan. Mm. 
a non-aggression pact. What is a non-aggression pact? It simply states that interfering with Marika Kato sure. is forbidden in New Oklahoma City. However, this truce will only extend until the Letter of Mark's renewal date. What happens after that is up for debate. What does... What are you talking about? After you officially become a pirate, at that point they'll have to include you in their discussion as to what happens next. Yeah, but I haven't even said I would be a pirate yet. And just what are you talking about? Uh, I said what are you talking about to the girl who was thrilled at electronic warfare. Was thrilled? Was I? Don't run from it, okay? Okay. Your teacher is a pirate. Shady people pursue you. This practice cruise will be full of danger. And there's a mysterious transfer student. It'll be fine. It's a great chance to go into space. I'm going on the practice cruise. And I don't think they're all enemies. I certainly hope not. Ah, exams, huh? I guess we'll see how far last-minute cramming goes. So what was Chiaki-chan doing there? Dunno, maybe she just likes our parfaits? I don't know. It looks like you have lots of problems. But you seem to be having fun. Oh, you think so? You know, sometimes I wonder, is it really okay for me to be your friend? You are my friend. You're more grounded than any of my other friends. I'm kind of flighty, so having you around really helps balance things. <laughs> You're going to be flighty all the way into space. That's silly, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, should I be expecting a present from you? I'll consider it. When you get back, let's go to the sea, okay? Yeah. tomorrow. They're in a hurry. So, what are your plans? I can mess around for the rest of the summer. I've saved up plenty of cash. Your job is fine, but how about the other thing? Well, you know... Uh, uh, Eureka san uh, hmm? The non-aggression pact. What do you think? What are you talking about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Never mind me. Okay, close your textbooks, everyone. Got it. is over. Pass your answer sheets forward. Okay. Excuse me! Why don't you look like a teacher? Don't make fun of me. I've got to make up a grade sheet. I don't just look like a teacher, I am one. Then here's a present. <laughs> what happened after that? Is someone going after the Oded too? Nope. They're probably waiting for it to launch into space. I want you to send word to the Benton Maru to keep an eye out for us. Here's to the students and their hard-working teacher. Is everyone here? Yeah! Last up is our doctor. Hey, look! It's Misa Sensei! Sensei! sensei. Misa. Misa! Hi! Everyone, it's finally time for our practice cruise. Some of you will be going into space for the first time. But I'm sure these few days will be quite useful in the rest of your lives. So work hard and do your best. Now let's go, ladies! This is the 
Odette 2, Hakua Academy Yacht Club President Jenny Doolittle. The Odette 2 will now depart from Docking Bay C-68. This is the Morning Star Relay Station. Roger that. Forward at minimum speed. Forward minimum speed. We have officially exited the control space of the Sea of the Morning Star Relay Station. Passing space speed 3. Switching settings from Sea of the Morning Star to Tau Ceti. Fine now. First, everyone, very good work. <laughs> As you can see, our course will take us around Tau Ceti and back to the relay station. By passing close to the planet Sand of the Red Star orbiting across from us, we'll absorb 400 times the thermal radiation that Sea of the Morning Star gets. There's no need to worry. We'll be all right. As Odette 2 receives the sunlight, its speed will approach maximum. But still, this is a sailing ship. I have to say, these days it's rare to see such a relaxed flight plan. A normal spaceship could make it there and back within a day. But if you notice, the Odette 2 will be using only 2% of the approach energy in the process. It makes more sense doing it that way. It's a nice bonus. <laughs> However, that means we must constantly monitor the ship and our surroundings. This is the perfect club activity. Now let's all do our best. The Oda 2 will now deploy its masts. Please confirm for me that no ships are in the surrounding area. Radar checked. Nothing on the transponder either. No problems for now. Roger. Now then, it's time for us to initiate mast deployment. Deploy the mizzen mast, the main mast, and then the foremast. Roger! What happened? What's going on? Oh, uh, right! The upper yard opened before the main mast was raised, and now it's tangled! I'm not sure what I should do. You tried everything you could to fix it, right? Yes. So the automatic systems can't fix this. Advisor, what would happen if we remove the safety and try forcing it up anyway? In a worst case scenario, we'd lose a third of the upper 12 o'clock mast. Not only would repulsion drop, but Space Mariners say that it's bad luck to damage a ship right after launch, and we don't need bad luck. This may be a dumb question, but did we load any work pods on board? No, we didn't. And we don't have any worker robots either. You knew that, right? <laughs> I was just checking. Well, freshmen, it's time for a spacewalk. <gasps> what? I'm surprised. So this is how modern spacesuits look. Even the safety checks are fully automatic. This is Kane. Come in. Bridge, can you hear me? Let me know. Loud and clear. We have video, too. Leave your communication channel open. Unless I give specific orders otherwise, we'll all use the same line. Understood? And unless there are special circumstances, use the same line for communications from the bridge. What would constitute a special circumstance? It would be something like an emergency that you couldn't let the students outside the ship know about. Or perhaps if we didn't want to let anyone know people were outside the ship. Some kind of emergency, huh? Oh, Lily, you pervert! Come on, give up! <laughs> hey, don't do that! to take a half dozen of these outside? I can hear you, advisor. This is... Uh, his idea. <laughs> Do you think 
think our suits will be all right for this? Put on your helmets and let's make sure they're airtight. If there's a problem, the suit should tell you they are fully automated. Once your helmet's on, you won't be able to hear anything external. Don't forget to turn on your communication systems. And once you're out there, even if hair gets in your eyes, there won't be a thing any of you can do to fix it. So you need to make sure your hair is pulled back. Prep room to bridge. Are all communication channels open? We're receiving data from Seven, including yours. All of our systems are currently receiving and recording the monitoring camera and bio data for us. All of you are one unit now. Everything you ladies see, as well as your vital readings, will be part of the permanent ship's log. What? Are you kidding me? Then close your face shields. Once we've verified they're airtight, let's open the door and exit. Feeling well? Opening the extravehicular workroom. All right, it's time to go outside. Follow me, ladies, this way. Outside? Okay, listen up. Don't be surprised by what you see now.
everyone's just a dot in space, aren't they? Are you scared? Yes. However, I like it too. In outer space, there isn't an absolute left, right, up or down. It all depends on your relative position. Understand where you've come from and where you're going, which way you're facing, and you'll know your current position. Confronted by the vastness of space, you may be disoriented by how small you are. But overcoming that feeling is your first step in outer space. Are you scared? Yes. However, I like it too. So what's this situation we're facing? Well, it isn't exactly an emergency. So I thought situation would be a better word to use for it. Tell me what's going on. The masts are fully extended and the antennas are up. So I ordered an omnidirectional scan to test our electronics. There were three spaceships without responsive transponders. They're not asteroids or comets, correct? Yes, we've checked. Uh, is this supposed to be a civilian ship's radar? It isn't a Navy flagship, that's for sure. Why would they need an IFF system on a ship like this one? Amazing, huh? That it is. This ship is pretty old. It's a survivor of the original Seven. Uh-huh. At the moment, we don't seem to be seeing any ships out there with transponders turned off. I think they're still in the logs. Of the three non-responsive ships, one passed by at a high speed. The other two ships eventually seem to have disappeared. Disappeared? Where's the Benton Maru? Uh, <laughs> Pro got detected by a high school girl? That's not a good sign. Well, I'll let the crew know about the other two ships. I should probably get back to work, shouldn't I? That's right. You just make sure to keep the infirmary clean, Misa-sensei. I'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> by an additional 5%. Roger. The Odette 2 is holding its course for the inner planets of the Tau Ceti star system. It sure is taking its sweet time, though. It's a sailing ship. But since we don't need to worry about fuel, let's take our time. We should try to enjoy this trip. Right! right. Night. Good night, Sasha. It really feels deliberate, doesn't it? Pairing the two of us on duty again together? Kane sensei knows what he's doing. It isn't worth thinking about. Anyway, tell me how the radar scan is looking. Huh? This area, there are fewer spaceships around than when we left port, right? Um, well, the device that broadcasts your ship's name, registration, present position, and heading is called a transponder. And all ships in space are required to keep theirs activated at all times. Why are you reading me the navigation laws? Currently, 15 vessels appear on our radar. Two of them are solar energy plants. One's an unmanned supply ship. The remaining 12 seem to have both IDs and flight plans that check out. I guess. If everyone is following the law. The weather report from the relay station seems to be cutting out at regular intervals. Huh? From the past logs, periodic transmissions to the control bureau are persistently cutting out as well. Huh. It's unlikely that ground-based control in the relay station would cut out simultaneously. Maybe mysterious aliens have attacked and have destroyed my home planet? You think? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess not then. Okay, let's see. Maybe it's the Lightning Eleven again? They're almost certainly hiding somewhere nearby. 
Then should we check all the ships on the radar individually? That's a good idea. Let's get started. Right! <laughs> They're a good combination. What's the point of jamming our communications? What do you think? Hmm... If we were in trouble, we couldn't send an SOS then, could we? That means... They're more than likely collecting data every time they jam our periodic transmissions. Makes sense to me. If we issue an SOS and they replace it with Odette 2 all clear... I get it. We'd be done for. That's right. The Yoda 2's course circles Tau Ceti and returns. That's no secret. Anyone accessing the relay station could learn that. So, if they wanted to try something, they'd do it on the other side of the star, where people are less likely to see. As we approach Sand of the Red Star. What do you think? That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> Why, thank you. But you're forgetting something important. What's that? Do you mean to tell me that you plan to fight alone on a ship with everyone on board? I'll hand it to you that you were amazing on that dinghy simulation. You also have good instincts, but if you start play fighting, you'll involve everyone, and more than likely someone will get hurt. <laughs> To begin with, does anyone know you're thinking about being the captain of a pirate ship? Around here, space pirates have practically been forgotten. If you told them, would any of them even believe you? Hmm. Canceling the database update. Automatic scans show nothing. Changing electronic warfare systems to manual. What are you going to do? If we're this far apart, we'll be okay, right? What are you planning? Even if we scan with the fire control system's high-frequency radar, I don't think they would assume they're the target at this distance. Are you serious? Any nearby battleship will think you're readying an attack, and they would attack us without hesitation. That's why I scanned first. No battleships. And it'd be their fault for hiding. Oh. Hm. Set the radar for a close-range, high-detail scan of the area. At least that gives us some kind of pretext. <laughs> Roger. Initiating omnidirectional close range high detail scan. Start! I found them! 500,000 kilometers behind us! The battleship? The Pleiades class battleship Alcyon belonging to the Colony Federation military. Battleship? Are they faking their transponder? This is what the radar scan results indicate. There's no transponder signal from them. Uh, it's too late for excuses now. Then, one more! Uh, huh? No readings? They got away? Nothing on infrared either. And no gravity waves or energy signals. One more! I can't believe it's not there. That's impossible. I can still see it in the logs. But... I'm looking up the Pleiades-class battleship Alcyon of the Colony Federation military. It went down 120 years ago. But the destroyed ship is missing and no bodies were ever recovered. But why would a ship like that... A ghost ship? A ghost ship? That's certainly a rare thing to run into out there in space. Uh, I think that's a little more than rare. So, what makes you two ladies think it was a ghost ship? Well, it looked like our transmissions were being blocked, so I booted up the high-frequency radar. Uh -huh. And the reading we saw in the first omnidirectional scan was identified as a battleship. But the ship we saw supposedly went down during the Wars for Independence 120 years ago. And when we looked into it, several people had also recorded seeing it, so we thought... Huh. Well, you two needn't worry about that. You're not alone. They're far more common than you'd think. Lots of sailors have had experiences with ghost ships. Have you? Hmm? Have you ever encountered one before in your travels? Who knows? Don't worry about it. For the past hundred years, no one's ever been downed by a ghost ship, and I don't think any ever will be, if you follow me. Breakfast beats worrying. Report to the cafeteria.
This is Kane, on board the Odette 2. Benton Maru, can you hear me? Well, Kane Sensei is speaking to someone outside the ship. To whom? It's a secret encrypted line. So we're lucky that the ID code was still listed in the phone book. The space pirate ship Benton Maru. Huh? Pirate ships are listed in the phone book? It's one of the benefits of being sanctioned. They do have a license, after all. So, what are they talking about? He's reporting the ghost ship we saw, and asking them to investigate further. <coughs> it's pretty far away. So it wasn't the Benton Maru. He's done talking to them. Wouldn't a pirate ship be too busy to deal with a girl's high school yacht club? Oh, you think so? Feel better? <laughs> I wonder who it was that made it possible to place a bug in the captain's room. I suppose it must have been some clever upperclassman wanting to know what the teachers were saying. <sighs> President, I'd like to talk to everyone. I thought you might. Enemy masquerading as a ghost ship is after us? I think that's probably our best guess at the moment. The communications problems we've experienced, the ones since leaving port, are probably that same group, the ones who tried to attack us before. So they've even been able to provide an evil villain for our high school girls' crews. That's a very nice bonus. <laughs> <laughs> then we're not exactly sure who it is yet, correct? Not yet. But I'm pretty sure I know why they're pursuing us. Oh? And why do you think that is? Because I'm on board this ship. <laughs> you are candidate for the captaincy of the space pirate ship Benton Maru, Miss Marika Kato. Uh? <laughs> As club president, I make it a point to know every single one of my members. I'm looking forward to being able to see some space piracy around here. Well, I'm still just a candidate. I haven't decided that I'm doing it. Listen to me, everyone. Because of some stuff with her family, bad guys are after Marika-san. <gasps> Marika, what did you do? Every single girl here has her own circumstances. It just happens that your circumstances mean that you might become a pirate captain someday. That's all there is to it. Space pirates? I didn't know they still existed. <laughs> Sorry. They do! So it's like a tradition? <sighs> Leaving all of that aside... Anyway, the enemy is chasing Marika and is after this ship. What do you think our best option would be? Huh? You've already considered it, haven't you? What do you think the Odette 2 should do? Call the military? Or... <sighs> Let's fight them off ourselves! Why do you say that? If you're just trying to be cool, I can't agree to it. To keep the adults from trying anything if the Odette 2 goes on another practice cruise. I'm not doing this for my sake or anything. It's for the future of the Hakuo Academy's Yacht Club. I mean, is that strange? So do you think we can do it? With the Odette 2 and this crew, I'm certain we can. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So eat breakfast and then get some sleep. We'll take care of the rest when you wake up. Right. side of Tau Ceti. There aren't ghost ships or anything. I'll be at dinner if you need me. Don't hesitate to call if there's an emergency. Okay, see you later. <sighs> Did you get some sleep? <laughs> nope, I was making that. I mean, it isn't quite done yet, but did you get to take a look at it? I did. A prediction for the enemy attack and a counterattack plan. But can we predict how the enemy will attack when we don't know their location? How can you be so sure? 
The Odette 2 will reach the maximum distance from Sea of the Morning Star as it approaches Sand of the Red Star on the other side of Tau Ceti. If I were going to attack an unsuspecting ship on a practice cruise, I'd most likely hide in the Sand of the Red Star's shadow and then attack from behind. Attacking a ship of girls from behind. How utterly barbaric. <laughs> I suppose that's why they're villains, after all. There's a lot written down, but this plan relies on convincing the enemy that their own plot is going well. They'll be preparing things before making contact with us, so we must pretend that whatever they do works. That's strategy. Hmm? Even if we pretend they've fooled us, what happens if their electronic warfare really does take over our system? Until now, their electronic attacks have been quite conventional. They don't appear to be particularly technologically inclined. We'll completely duplicate the Odette 2 systems in an isolated area, and then reroute all their cracking attempts to that. We'll let them do as they like to it, and it won't affect our navigation. We should be able to see everything they do. That's tactics. Well, I... I don't really understand the difference between strategy and tactics. Is that how it works? Even if you don't understand, you need to think of them as two separate things. So, what does the Vice President say? Well, I sent it to her when I sent it to you, so I think she's looking at it right now. Rin? Saw it. What do you think? I know the net, but electronic warfare between two ships in flight falls outside my specialty. I'm just a high school girl, you know. And the electronic weaponry on this ship? It's totally foreign to me. I still don't understand a lot of it. That's pretty rare. I've never known you to be at a loss with any sort of computer. Well, the basics of electronic warfare don't change that much, so long as you're still using EM waves and networks. We've managed to deal with everything they've tried throwing at us so far. And while I will admit Kato's notes are more than a little vague, they're essentially accurate. <laughs> Sorry they're kind of vague. Tell me, do you think it'll work? If we prepare, have our equipment ready, and make the right choices, we can do anything. What do you think, President? I'm sure you're already aware of it, but this ship used to be a pirate ship. You might say it's a veteran. What can I do? Marika-san, I want you to plan what will happen if things turn more dangerous around here. Think of how to prepare all of the students for every eventuality that could happen. All that's left is telling everyone else to prepare to fight this ghost ship. That seems to be the plan. Impressive, don't you think? They know we're on board, and they're secretly planning a battle anyway. It's really kind of charming when you think about it, isn't it? And all of them are well aware of what the stakes here are. They aren't just enjoying themselves. They each have their own circumstances. The president is an extremely rich tycoon's daughter. Her future husband has been selected for her since she was little. In the middle school, the vice president was placed on probation for hacking. All of them have other interesting stories. So don't you think they'd understand? Then I guess the Yacht Club is the right place for her. Talk about a group of characters. Still, they're all good kids. But this plan she wrote, part of it depends on luck, and some of it's just irrelevant. It has all kinds of problems. But the basic idea is valid. I think that it's pretty good for a novice's first attempt. Pretty good? Don't be silly. It's amazing. She came up with this on zero sleep and without experience. In a few years, she'll be terrifying. So what do you plan on doing? The Miss has made her decision. As club advisor, my only option is feigning ignorance until the very end. I'll help them out. They're my students, after all. I have to make sure they get home safe. Good luck, Sensei. I see them. 700,000 kilometers on the side facing the sun. It's a minuscule reading, but this is probably it. What is it? From this distance and at this size, it's impossible to get detailed specs. But I think it's an ultra-small unmanned stealth unit. Then its largest dimension would be less than a meter? I'm amazed you found something that tiny. I scanned with the sun sensor. So this is our ghost ship? Not impressive. Scan with a high-frequency radar, and it pretends to be the battleship Alcyon. If you recreate a ship's hull from the plans, you can fake a radar signature. Mix in something to compensate for the Doppler effect, add some noise, return it to the source of the radar, and you have yourself a ghost ship. Not hard when you think about it. <laughs> Convenient. So what do we do? Let's pretend we haven't figured it out and we know nothing, but then... But what? 
This fake ghost ship will probably act as the antenna for their electronic attacks. If possible, I'd like to deploy it against the enemy mothership. Cause, you know, it'd be nice if we could do that. You want us to take over the ghost ship? That's right. If you can't do it, Rin, all you have to do is say so. No, I'll try. President, can I connect my computer to the ship's systems? Don't ruin the systems. And don't go putting a lot of extra shortcuts everywhere. <laughs> that girl. And President? Huh? What? I think I'd like to change the flight plan a little. Tau Ceti. So, I thought it might be faster if we start our turn sooner and go inside Sand of the Red Star's orbit. Mm -hmm. It'll shave some time off the flight plan, and then it would get us back to the relay station a little faster. And? Huh? It isn't only to save time. The reason you changed our path? Explain that too. Well, I guess the biggest reason is that I think we can limit the enemy's actions this way. <clears throat> We're almost inside the Sand of the Red Star's gravity field. The area around the planet is completely within radar scanning range. But as of yet, we haven't seen any ships that would be likely to attack us. If there is an enemy after us, there's only one possible reason they haven't shown themselves. They're hiding somewhere. And where is that somewhere? There are currently only two areas that the Odette 2's radar can't see. The far side of Sand of the Red Star, or inside the sun, where of course the radiation is too strong for radar to function properly. I vote for the one that isn't the sun. Agreed. One vote for far side of the planet. One of the basic rules of air combat is to always be closer to the sun. That's a good idea. I don't see any spaceships there likely to cause trouble, and it's within the error margin for our submitted flight plan. Please make the changes. The change to the flight plan means that we won't be closest to Sand of the Red Star on the morning of the fourth day. It will be midnight on the third. So the battle will begin while the teachers are fast asleep. Think it'll work that way? It's possible that they won't attack until morning. Well... That would buy us more distance from Sand of the Red Star, and the extra sunlight would mean we'd gain that much speed. And in the worst case, if nothing happens, I'll just say... I'm so sorry. It was all in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> then that's just fine. <laughs> okay, everyone, it's going to be happening tonight. Sure that no one was in the hallways. 
All that's left is for you to intercept the internal ship monitor. And no one will have seen the pretty doctor sneaking into the captain's room at night. That shouldn't be too hard for you. Thanks. I am supposed to be married, after all. Don't want to spill the beans. So, everyone's at their stations on the bridge after lights out. Is that okay? Not a problem. I took some minimal precautions. I turned off the monitors for the infirmary, your room, and mine. All that should be left is for us to pretend that we were asleep, should anyone happen to call us in case of emergency. Do you think that will happen? If they need to. Miss Marika makes quick assessments. I feel sure that she'll call us before things get bad enough that our help is needed. No need to worry. Seems you have a lot of faith in her. You saw her yacht flight simulator the other day. How quickly she makes decisions and her ability to stick to them. So what's the situation? They just sent their standard check-in via FTL communication. And we almost passed the closest distance to Sand of the Red Star. If the miss is right, and I think that she is, the enemy will soon start initiating an all-out cyber warfare attack. Looks like they've begun. It's here. Oh, it really came. The whole effective radius is flooded with noise. Wow. So this is real electronic jamming. It's the exact same reading I saw in the textbook from that military site. Of course, just flooding the area with jamming waves is the simplest trick in the book. It's nothing special. Every one of us is new to this, so I'm thinking this could actually work to our advantage. Honestly, even if they knock our eyes out now, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, even flying blind, there isn't anything to hit out here. And even without radar, we can use the direction of sunlight and gravity and fly with just our instruments. What do we do? Do you think we should send an FTL message to flight control with the situation? Not yet. I'm pretty sure the enemy wants us to open an FTL line. If they can hijack a zero time lag FTL line, we won't be able to do anything at all. But with our electronic warfare systems, we're not going to make it easy for those guys, are we? Well, that's true. Ugh. And there it is, I've got hacking on our normal line. If they're smart, they'll hit radar and comms at the same time. Everything completely by the book. That just means they'll be easier to fight. It makes it easy to deal with. Then? <laughs> Well, for now, I think we should just follow the game plan and act like we think it's an error. Just try pretending that you're fiddling with the radar screen settings and adjusting the frequency. Oh, do it slowly, as though only two people were on duty. Don't work too fast. I couldn't do it fast anyway. No need for you to worry. <laughs> System check. I've confirmed the radar is fine as far as the antenna connection. Next, maybe I'll reset the switches. Thanks, you're awesome. How is the comm line doing? They've found their way into our isolated dummy system. As we planned, they believe it's the Odette 2s and are doing their best to break it. I'm fighting back as hard as I can, but the default security settings are pretty easy to break. Yeah, it was easy this time because we were able to take precautions. But if we hadn't noticed, before we knew it... If we lost control to the outside, they'd be able to not only control our heading, but our life support systems as well. If we'd set the electronic countermeasures to automatic, would it have worked? Probably not. If these are the same guys you fought at the relay station, they've seen our automatic systems once. And if they've seen them, they could probably beat them. The same pattern won't work twice. I'd think they would have prepared something to deal with it. And we would have been taken over even faster. If that's the case... Huh? How did they conduct electronic warfare in the past? I think the same way they do now. In the end, it's all human power. You can have computers break through security and match quantum codes, but you still have to be the one to decide where to start or what to use. And if it fails, you have to be the one to tell it what to do next. And you have to manually repel the attacks that the automatic systems can't deal with. You have to think faster than the computers can act. The judgment of the person on duty is everything. It's surprisingly primitive. Dummy systems have been 50% hijacked. I'd like to reboot the radar, but if they're still jamming, it won't help. I I'm not sure what we should do in this situation. We don't know when they'll cease jamming. In this case, I'm more concerned about not having radar, even for a second. Then just make the radar stop emitting. If we do, they'll think we believe it's broken and are rebooting it. 
If we just shut down the emitter, we can bring it back. That's a good idea. I want you to shut down the radar emitter. Right. Shutting down emitter. Are there any other preparations? Stop the ship. Just stop? Are all of the Odette 2 systems functioning normally? Navigation systems are fine. Engines 1 and 2 are up and online. Output steadily increasing. Sail systems all green. Mass still functioning. Sail 2. Normal comm systems are still being hacked. FTL comm systems on standby. Of course, electronic warfare systems are ready. Oh, I forgot. Seal all bulkheads. You've got to do that, too. That's right. We don't know what'll happen, so let's do what we can. On my command, commence sealing all bulkheads. Dummy systems 100% under enemy control. Outside communications have ceased. <clears throat> Everyone, are you ready? Begin combat operations! Begin electronic warfare! The enemy should think we're under their control and reveal themselves. Go ahead and restore radar before they confirm. Radar emitter rebooted. There it is. A ship is behind us, near Sand of the Red Star. Their transponder is active. They think they have us. The Lightning Eleven, registered in West Kilia. I knew it. They've stopped their electronic warfare attack, which means the bad guys think that they're in control and are finally letting their guard down. That's good for us. Huh? Emergency message coming in from the Lightning Eleven. There they are. <laughs> from Lightning Eleven, to Captain of the Odette Two. Your ship is now under our control. Surrender immediately. It's an official message, and they aren't naming themselves. They really are underestimating us. Don't respond for a little while. Think about it. It hasn't been that long since they jammed our radar, has it? It's a night on our ship. So it'd be unnatural for the captain to respond too quickly. That's right. We're supposed to make it look to them like we've been caught unaware, right? What are they doing? Confirming our ship is completely under their control. And they're looking through the internal monitors at us right oh, now. No! Oh, no! Oh, they're panicking! Oh my god! No one panic. It's okay. When I made the dummy systems for them to attack, I loaded them with images from our library. All those idiots are going to see are empty rooms and two bored people on night watch most likely uh, sleeping. They're trying to ring our alarms. What are they thinking? They are kindly trying to alert a bunch of idiot high school girls who didn't even realize their ship was taken over to an emergency. And there it goes. Which means all the idiot high school girls have been woken up <laughs> and are probably <laughs> running around screaming in terror. As idiot president of the Yacht Club, maybe I should send a half-awake answer to our attackers. Route setting is complete and ready. I've used their FTL line as a direct link to their ship's core system. They attacked with electronic warfare, but their security's a piece of crap. Well, there you go, President. Your answer? Roger that. From Captain of the Odette 2. No. President of the Hakuo Girls Academy Yacht Club, Jenny Doolittle. To Captain of the Lightning Eleven. Nuts. That's all. Huh? I told our attackers nuts. Do you think I should repeat myself? Uh, n no. Okay, Vice President. As soon as she transmits her message, start your electronic attack on the Lightning Eleven. Roger. Okay, here we go. Transmit. Use the radar to start jamming their communications. Roger. Spring has come and gone, and summer is here. They say in summer we hang our white robes on heavenly Kazu Mountain. They responded with another poem. You swore to love me forever, but I don't know if I can believe you. I guess they know what they're doing then. The enemy shut down the line. No need to worry, ladies. We have plenty of good equipment to play with. You won't get away. There it is. The enemy's jamming waves. But it's too late. And weak. All we have to do is up our output. The Odette 2 pushes forward through the blue like a scent of a blooming flower. In terms of sheer output, we have as much as a battleship. Okay, they're ours. All right, then let's knock out their engines. Leave just enough power for them to communicate. Roger, I've emergency shut down their primary engines, and now they're backups. 
just in case. This would do it. What the? What's wrong? There's nothing there? What's wrong? A system problem? No. The resistance I encountered when I was messing with their systems has suddenly disappeared. Uh. All of the communication lines to the Lightning Eleven have suddenly shut down. No. That isn't all they shut down. It only looks like it because they've completely powered off their computers. Uh? What does that mean? They turned off their computer. We can't get to them, so our victory is meaningless. Uh. Meaningless? Oh. Energy wave approaching. Oh. Oh. What do you mean by energy wave? I think they're aiming at us with a particle beam cannon. Isn't its computer down? As long as their primary power is online, they can do whatever they want. That's why they shut it down before I could cut it off. <clears throat> Another. No radar waves, and no response on the comm line. This doesn't make any sense at all. I want to know how they're aiming at us. Any decent gun port is bound to have optical target systems running. Optical targeting systems? without any radar. Simple. All you have to do is use your eye to look through the targeting scope and you merely adjust the gauge. By eye? Another one, closer than before. Just some luck? Or are they adjusting each time they fuck it? What do we do? Just let them shoot us? This ship has no beam cannons and no shields. It's fine. The Lightning Eleven is firing from range. It can't move. It's dead in the water. If we switch to normal propulsion, we can no, run. No, don't! Hmm? If we fire our engines now, they'll be able to use infrared sensors, not just optical targeting. They'll know our exact location. But we can't return fire. We can! Calculate their position as accurately as you can. What are you going to do? Use a secret weapon! Huh? Excuse me. Right, right. Okay, let's see. High-frequency radar generate an accurate positioning for the Lightning Eleven. Like this? Okay. The enemy is 400,000 kilometers behind us. Their ship's total width is about 30 meters. This one, too! Go! What? Don't worry. The masks are moving to match my adjustments. Hold on tight! What did you do? Set their permeability to zero, the solar sails will reflect 100% of the sunlight. And if we adjust them so that they all point at a single spot behind us... Any more beams? What is the Lightning Eleven doing? Its engines are still offline, and there doesn't appear to be any signal. Huh, their infrared's going up. Did we get them? Knock them out with the sunlight? We don't need to burn them up. Just keep them from using their optical targeting systems. It moved. <laughs> Which way? Is it following us? Starting to attack? Wait, no, there are more? More? One. No, two. Reinforcements have arrived. There's more than one? Their transponders are on. The one to the north is a pirate ship. It's the Bentonmaru. <gasps> the other is another pirate ship. The Barbalusa? That's my ship. Huh? I'm glad I came to see who might be the Bentonmaru's next captain. Please allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Chiaki Kurahara. I am the first daughter of Kenjo Kurahara, the captain of the space pirate ship, the Barbalusa. Wow, they're not holding back. Neither our ship nor the Barbalusa. The stellar military is here as well. This is the stellar military six escort fleet. Odin two, we have you on radar. Is there anything you need? This is the Odin two. We're fine now. Thank you.
Good sailing. The Hucka Show, one of the original seven. I think it still has a lot of fight in it. gonna do it. I'll be captain. I've decided I'm going to be a space pirate. My dear, live long.
going to be a pirate. Yep. I'll look up at the sky and you'll be there. I think that's really neat. Won't be easy, but I think I'll go when school allows. I want to graduate from high school. For now, let's just have lots of fun today. Yeah, we still have tons of summer break left. Let's go! <laughs> what? what? Uh... We've come to pick you up. Uh, I During that time, the letter is rescinded and you lose your command. You see, that means the Benton Maru has to go pirating since you got a new letter. So you need to get started, young lady. But... You have 49 days, 9 hours, 22 minutes. Seven weeks, huh? I guess you'll have to find a way. Can you handle it? Uh, you can do it, right? Uh... She doesn't have a choice. Huh? Uh... Have a good time. <gasps> good luck, Marika. Benton Maru moving to normal flight. No other transponders in the area. Continuing toward destination. What? What's that? Are we being attacked? Give me a damage report. Direct hit on the port side. Hull breach. No problems with navigation systems. What about radar? An ambush? No. Oh no! We have to get out of here! Shields to maximum! Advance while executing evasive maneuvers! Keep the sun behind us and use its gravity to re-accelerate! That should do it! There are more? Oh, I'm surrounded! Launch ECM! Disperse chap and beam dispersal field! Uh, direct hit to the engine room! Output dropping! Turn the ship around! Target the weakest enemy! We can still get out of this! We didn't get out of it. Captain, you are dead. And you've gone down. Everyone aboard has died. Is being a pirate really going to be this difficult? Occasionally. It doesn't happen often, but situations get tough from time to time, and you need to be ready to command in times when it does get this bad. A captain must be able to laugh and make decisions regardless of how bad things are. <laughs> you need to do better than that. Okay, take a 60-minute break. Get some food and cool your head, then we'll discuss electronic warfare. Roger! Ha, 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 ha,
<laughs> well now, are you getting used to the food? I'm not used to it yet. It's better than when I started, though. So, what's next for you? Electronic warfare lecture, then hand-to-hand -hand combat <laughs> training. Try to stay alive until my class, okay? I'll do my best. Okay, now I'm thinking. <laughs> Six hours of sleep, then back up and at them. Oh, man. 127 hours into the voyage? She's trying pretty hard. We'd better hope the little lady is. At first, it felt to me like she was just going with the flow. But now the young lady's beginning to think for herself. She's sharp. But it's going to take another push or two. I think it's about time for the propellant. Huh? Our propellant has arrived. Chiyuki Kurahara, daughter of the Barbalusa's captain, Kenjo Kurahara. I'm honored to have been invited to this training. Chiyuki-chan? Huh? Chiyuki-chan! Uh, ah! Stop it! Oh, oh, no, Chan! Thanks for coming! Oh, I'm so happy! I'm here for special training. I didn't come here to see you. Why would I do that? That's just fine. I'm so happy anyway! Uh, uh, hmm. Propellant's the right word. Federation issued letters of mark to space pirates. So why did the independence wars end, Marika? Because both the Colony Federation and their suzerains were absorbed by the Galactic Empire. That's right. An enormous Galactic Empire fleet appeared. After doing so, it then absorbed both conflicting sides with its overwhelming power. That's scarily well made, huh? Does she like crafts? So everything ended before a final war could begin, and they all lived happily ever after. Then tell me, ladies, just what happened to the pirates? Um... That's right. They're still out there in space, pirating. The Galactic Empire respects each system's right to self-rule in its own way. Of course, they don't allow piracy, but a vessel with a proper letter of mark isn't technically considered a pirate ship, which is how we find ourselves where we are today. Huh? Are you saying we aren't pirates? Not on the surface. If nothing else, the Galactic Fleet doesn't engage in large operations to pursue or eliminate pirates. At least not anymore. So we're pirates, but we're not pirates. Interstellar law treats pirates as military forces. Thus, we're obligated to always be professional. Naturally, that includes pirate captains. <laughs> are really isolated out here. I was surprised at first sight. Once you set sail, there isn't anything else around, so you have to construct your own internal bearings. How big the ship is, where it's going, where it is. Then you're saying you decide for yourself where you are. It's kind of exciting. Don't you think? So that's why you want to be a pirate? I thought of you as a soft little princess, but I can see I was wrong. Completely wrong. I'm not? Maybe you don't understand? When you pretend to be a ditch, it creates problems for those around you. You need to cut the act. What? I cause problems? If nothing else, you make me really angry. Well, I don't really understand, but I'm sorry. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Huh? Forget it. Look, we're almost there. Good work.
work, you two. To return, do the opposite of what you just did. Okay! <sighs> What's wrong? I honestly don't think doing all this stuff will make you a pirate captain. Not at all. It's too late for that. Ignorance is a sin. Actually, it's worse. It's fatal. Everyone will die. But pirates don't need an honor student captain whose sole skill is doing everything correctly. She doesn't look like a mere honor student to me. She's in the gap between two places. A deeper, darker gap than you would ever guess by looking at it. That is why she chose space. We are just unable to teach you. You have to learn them for yourself. Uh, like what exactly? Courage. Our target is the Princess Apricot, a luxury liner sailing the Galactic Corridor West 37. It's a simple pirating exercise. We disable their system with electronic warfare, then board the ship and start taking things. We'll also be featuring additional swordplay by the captain. Swordplay? We are pirates, you know. Pirates use swords. Kane's already gone ahead to set it up. Schnitzer will give you additional sword and weapons training. As for the rest, it's all here in the manual. Allow me to do this as well. Does that mean that you're going to train with me? Don't get the wrong idea. I want to learn. I've never been able to do anything official like this in my entire life. This is the chance. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. Space Pirates? You didn't know. This galactic corridor has been known as the Pirate's Corridor forever. But pirates are just a legend, aren't they? Right? I heard that they were exterminated long ago and none are to be found, even on the underdeveloped border planet. Pirates in these modern times, huh? A toast to our ship's safety and to space pirates. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. The luxury liner Princess Ipricot has just completed its 12th MTL run. We have arrived in Galactic Corridor West 37 as scheduled. We will soon be at our closest distance to the red giant Lambdor. Our course remains unchanged, and it will soon be midnight in the main hall. We hope all of our passengers continue to enjoy It's almost the time. <laughs> what? You ladies are about to have an interesting experience. Huh? Could this be? We're really quite fortunate. <laughs> oh. You already did it? Working? We're broadcasting? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. This is the Benjamin Maru! The pirate ship Benjamin Maru! I'm the Benjamin Maru! The pirate ship Benjamin Maru! Sorry! <laughs> I am the pirate ship captain! Captain Marika! Marika! They're loving it! Not only are they being attacked by pirates, but the captain is a girl. Those guys are so lucky. The Benton Maru has completed its electronic attack on the Princess Apricot systems. All Princess Apricot systems, including navigation and life support, are now under our control! <laughs> She's loving this. <coughs> Wanna give it a try? No, thank you. <clears throat> so basically, the Princess Apricot is now in our hands, so you'd better behave! <sighs> They're laughing! What's happening? Why are they all so happy? Because pirates are coming, of course. Pirates? The Benton Maru's main cannons are locked on the Princess Apricot's bridge, so escape or resistance would be utterly impossible. <gasps> I, Captain Marika, and my party are coming aboard. All passengers, please prepare to hand over your valuables. Time. 
All that's left now is for you to act like a captain. Hey, Schnitzer, tell me something. What? You went pirating with Rurika song. I mean, Blaster Rurika, right? Yes, just like this. Many, many times. What was my mother like? Why does it matter? Well... You're your own person, and Rurika is Rurika. Concentrate on the task at hand. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's why I came to space in the first place. Uh, uh, are they real pirates? The space pirate ship Benton Maru. They bear a letter of mark in quite a long and illustrious history. You know, in Galactic Empire space, pirates have become quite an endangered species. You ladies are quite fortunate. Fortunate? What will happen to us? Do you think we'll be all right? They might ask you to hand over your accessories to them. But don't worry. The liner company's insurance will cover the loss. Goodbye, Kurahara. I can wake her up if you want. I'll prioritize rendezvousing with the Barbalusa. Misa-san said there wouldn't be any problems with that. But next semester you're returning to your old school, right? You won't be able to see her for a while, you know. That's fine by me. Just seeing that ditzy smile on her face starts to make me nauseous sometimes. By the way, Sensei. Huh? Aren't you going to change? <laughs> I like hearing everyone gasp when they see it. That's creepy. Excuse me. Bye, Kurihara. <gasps> Flying alone. Huh. But you're not alone in space. Not ever. Your goal here is recon. Keep your data lines and radio channels open at all times. Roger. But if we get into a battle, I'll have you shut them both down. Yeah, gladly. So how's the probe looking? Fine. It's transmitting the information. What are you playing around for? There's something fishy about this planet. 
auto program tugboats, huh? There's nothing I can see on the radar. Maybe... I knew it! I found the enemy on the other side of the planet. Stealth, huh? No wonder they didn't appear on radar. Captain, return to base. Roger. If I don't return soon, the base tomorrow will be in danger. Box sure did. What? A dream. Oh, that's a relief. Jeez. Look, homeroom's over now. The teacher felt bad and didn't want to wake you up. He said to come to the nurse's office. <clears throat> Why the nurse's office? I know I may not be the one to talk, but are you feeling all right, Marika? Well, uh... your grades have been consistently falling since the second semester began. You were doing very well before, so you aren't failing yet, but, uh... Lately, every single one of your quiz scores have been Fs or lower. Even if they were open book tests. Well, I just... Yeah, I'm sorry. We won't do anything too hard while our captain's still in school. We're trying to choose jobs that we can complete in a single day. But if doing both is too hard, then you should consider dropping out... I'm not dropping out of school! I'm going to graduate and be a pirate! I'm just fine. I'll try harder. There are times when trying harder simply isn't enough. I can decide that for myself. And I will. So if you please. She's the one doing the studying for classes. I guess the change in circumstances has been hard on the girl. She used to always be on time and have perfect attendance. Now she arrives late and leaves early every day. We can't do anything about it. We can't take any big jobs. That means we'll start taking more small ones. She says she'll make the decision herself. <sighs> That's natural for a captain, but she's a first-year high school student. But she's a pirate. And all that matters for a pirate is winning in the end, am I right? This is training, too, to become a grown-up. I wonder, what is her obsession with high school? would be happy to hear that. <laughs> I heard we won't be doing any pirating for a while. I have to redeem myself. Redeem? Then why not try studying? Haven't your test scores been totally horrendous lately? My job here is important too. Uh... Chun? There's no Chun. Here you go. Everyone was surprised when you transferred at the start of the second semester. Sorry, I didn't come to say hi. Marika? Oh. Uh, <coughs> I totally <laughs> knew it. Sorry. She was here a second ago, but I guess she had a job to do. No way. Marika wasn't supposed to have any work this week. Ah! Uh, I knew you came to see her! No, no I didn't. I came to eat this parfait. My shift's almost over, you know. You want to come with me afterwards? Here's the data from Hakame. Weren't we supposed to not have any work? It's a sudden job, so we get upfront payment plus a big bonus. 
twice the normal rate. In that case, we'll take it. It's the usual pirate job on a luxury liner. But this time, the client added an optional package. Optional package? We're almost at the Benton Maru. Uh you know, Marika works really hard. People only look at the results, so they all treat her like she's a genius. But you know the truth. I do. She pushes herself really close to the limit. Huh? Back in middle school, I once asked her why she works so hard at everything. And she told me she really wanted to know more about Ririka-san. <laughs> Even though that's her own mother. I was like, huh? But when I went to her house, I understood. You know what I mean? Uh, her mom is totally amazing! I'm already aware of that. Hmm? Blaster Ririka, the legendary female pirate. So I heard. But you know, it wasn't an old story like that. When I met her, she was so amazing I didn't know what to do. When you're near her, it's just overpowering. She's huge! Huh? Huh? Ah! Huge? Yeah, as a person. You mean like she's a great person? Yeah, that's it. And so, her mom's like this big mountain and Marika doesn't want to climb it. She just wants to be another big mountain next to her. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm sure of it. But that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that's true. See you. Thank you for coming along with me. What is it you were trying to say to me anyway? Hmm, I'm really not sure. Just seeing your face made me feel like talking, Chiyuki-chan. Listen, there's no time. <laughs> uh... In space, you're taking over my place. Thank you. I'm taking your place? <laughs> Thank you. Huh. Captain! Captain! Please report to the bridge immediately. Captain! Right! Right, 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 right! 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 Sorry I'm late. You're late. I know, but these clothes take forever to put on. I can make some adjustments, can I? Whatever. Just do it once we've completed this job, Captain. Is there still time, Kane? One minute, 30 seconds until we return to normal space. Let's go over this once more. Our target is Frigid Line's mega ship, the Symphony Angel. It has a three ship escort, so we'll be using ship to ship combat before boarding. That's the optional package the client chose, right? We're vastly more powerful than they are. We knock them around a bit, and then we demand their surrender. Nothing to it. And we do our pirating as normal once we've boarded their ship. Have we already had our meeting with them? We took care of that before you guys arrived. Our plan for the optional ship-to-ship -ship battle, including surprise attack, has been filed with the Navigation Control Bureau and has been passed along to the client as well. They want to show their customers something like a real battle, huh? Okay, everybody! Time to get to work! Returning to normal space! Mega Liner and three Corbac class escorts. Already? Radar and sensors all looking good. Propulsion and mobility systems all green. We can fire at will. Electronic warfare systems operational. Weapon and navigation systems are engaged and ready for battle. The Corbacs have sighted us. They have our position and transponder. That means they've already confirmed our name and position. Benton Maru, let's go! Aye, aye, Captain. Initiating jamming two. I have all three escorts. Hmm. Case 
After the electronic warfare, we approach and begin ship-to-ship -ship combat. Then we approach the Symphony Angel. There's really nothing for me to do until we board. Remember to send the surrender demand. Cindy. So they will attack in a short time. Energy readings from the enemy ships are rising. These guys are serious. They ignored our surrender demand? Why does everyone love firing their stupid guns so much? You don't get many chances at real combat. They're paying top dollar for this. Let them have their fun, it's harmless. We have the targeting data. We wait for the callbacks to open fire and then respond. Okay, here they come! <clears> hmm? <throat> yes, I bought them. Jasmine T and your favorite shocker dad. I sent them by the space post earlier. All that's left is the duty-free Lumbumbashi, right? Huh? What? I can't hear you. Ugh. Understood, Captain. I'll remain here at the school. Send me the information once you get it. Something's happening. I need to find out. The Corvacs have changed attack patterns. What do you mean? They've stopped the brute force electronic warfare and are maintaining formation while they split up. Can anyone tell me what this means? Go, Cop Marika-san. Huh? Well, uh, I think they're increasing their scanning capability by widening the gap between all of their network-connected sensors. That's right. <laughs> Will they be able to find our present location? Mass-produced shipboard computers aren't fast enough. Don't worry. Uh. The amount of sensor data increases at an insane rate, so just analyzing it will take all, all their processing power unless one decides to take a chance and focus their sensors where fine. Anyone who's shown that kind of guts would have to be a pirate. Yep, yep. I can see huh? it. Huh? What can you see, Luca? I cannot say. <sighs> Thanks a lot. Now, let's finish this already. I have school tomorrow, you know. I can't be out all night. Enemy Corvax designated as Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Firing data input. Ready to fire warning shots. Fire! All three have stopped. Okay, not yet. Uh, the electronic warfare is ongoing. Huh? The enemy ship's energy readings are rising. They're gonna fire again. They won't surrender? Don't worry, we're still far off. from a simultaneous firing pattern to a wave-based one. What hasn't changed is how bad their targeting is. <sighs> okay, maybe I'll turn the alarms off. No. Huh? No matter how bad they are, an attack is an attack. It doesn't change the fact that they're shooting at the Benton Maru. You can't relax your guard. Hey, do you think they might not have heard the surrender order we sent? That message had a receipt confirmation. If their comms people aren't slacking off, they heard it. It's possible to simultaneously surround all three ships with cannon fire. Let's show them whom they're dealing That's with. That's right. Our customers are watching. We need to give them their money's worth. Uh, Roger. Targeting Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Firing all cannons! Issue another surrender order. Add that our next shot will be a warning shot targeting the Symphony Angel. Roger! These decisions are the captain's job as well, Marika. Learn it soon. <laughs> well, I really don't like threatening anyone. We're pirates. The scarier, the better. And this isn't a threat, it's a bargaining tactic. Main cannon is charging. If it's just a warning shot, we can fire immediately. We've got an answer. But it's from the Symphony Angel. No, I think it's their escort. It looks like it says we surrender. Uh, the ship that's being protected surrenders? Isn't that the wrong progression? Shouldn't the escort surrender before the luxury liner? Uh, oh my gosh, the escort fleet just surrendered too. Um, this one's in the name of the fleet commander. Surrenders from two places? Did they make a mistake? People make mistakes all the time. But while you can always try to speculate, if you only interpret things in a way that's convenient for you, it's going to turn around and bite you in the end. What are the escorts doing? They've dropped out of battle formation. 
Their energy readings are still a little bit high, but that isn't very uncommon. I have the Symphony Angel's control system. Kuri, continue electronic warfare. The Benton Maru will dock with the target. Boarding teams, get ready to disembark. It's time for some piracy. sensor isn't picking up anything. We shouldn't have to worry. Energy signals and metal signals are within normal parameters. It doesn't appear they brought anything bad on board. So this stowaway, where are they? And what are they doing? They snuck into uh -huh. docking control and have holed up in there. What about the sleeping gas? Why are we using it? Yeah, well, about that. Estimated height 140 centimeters. Weight 34 kilograms. Given the fact that we don't see any mechanical or electronic noise in their energy signal, our stowaway is likely to be an ordinary child. An ordinary child? What does he or her want? They're just hiding. The only thing they said was that they demand to speak with the captain. That's it. So, we had no choice but to call you. Very well. Connect me. This is the Benton Maru's bridge. Docking control. Can you hear me? I want to speak with the captain. I want to speak with the captain. I won't negotiate with anyone else. You are right. I am the captain of this ship. Who are you? You're lying. The captain of the Benton Maru is a man. I know that much. Get me Captain Kato. Oh, the Benton Maru's captain passed away. Did you know the previous captain? I'm the captain now. You're lying. Gonzamans. No one told me that Captain Kato was dead. Stop these terrible lies! Surely you know that information on the pirate captains with letters of mark is available on the public net. I'm not lying. Who are you? 
Marika Kato, his daughter. Kuri, send her all of the data we have about the Benton Maru having a new captain. Roger that. I'm sorry I accused you of lying. It never occurred to me that he might have passed away. I am Princess Greer Serenity. And I am Seventh Princess of the Serenity Royal Family. information on the Serenity royal family? I've only seen stuff about the royal family in the news headlines. They have nothing to do with us. Get the information quickly. Keep talking to her, Captain. The f oh, right! <clears throat> Sorry to keep you waiting, Princess Greer Serenity. I'm Marika Kato, Captain of the Benton Maru. It's strange, isn't it? Repeating our names like this? Please, call me Marika. You may call me Gruyere. Hmm. Uh, if it would be all right, would you remove whatever is blocking the camera so we can see your face? You can see me, so we'd be even then. It would be easier to talk that way. If you don't want to, I understand. Hello? Still there? Come in. Uh. Ah! It's a pleasure to meet you, Marika. My name is Gruyere. I apologize for boarding without the captain's permission. Would you extend permission to me, please? Uh, yes. You have permission. Welcome to the Benton Maru. Thank you, Captain. She's the real thing. Princess Greer Serenity. This girl's data matches the stuff provided by the royal family. So it really is the young princess after all. All right, Greer. I'm going to send someone to guide you around the ship. Uh, let's see. Uh, Schnitzer, I want you to head to the docking control room and give the princess an escort up here. Me? You want me to escort her around the ship? You sure that's a good idea with someone who hasn't seen me before? She might be a little surprised, but it'll be okay. After all, I was fine. No, I refuse. <sighs> oh, all right. Then Kane can do it! Uh, look, where am I escorting her anyway? We don't have any luxury rooms here, Captain. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, she can't go to the captain's quarters, and the cafeteria is definitely not an option. Uh, Misa, is there anywhere on board that she can go? Let me think. Maybe the room where we keep the people we've kidnapped. What? There? <laughs> Isn't there anywhere she can stay? I am Gruyere Serenity. I apologize again for stowing away on your ship. Please allow me to aboard the Benton Maru. Uh. <clears throat> but, uh, oh, well, I'm the captain, Marika. Welcome aboard the Benton Maru, princess. Wait, no, it's Gruyere, right? You are very welcome here. Thank you very much, captain. I suppose I'll have to get accustomed to it. Your face is very similar to your father's. Oh, is it really? I never met my father. What kind of person was he? He was wonderful. She's the real thing. I apologize for my rudeness earlier. I didn't know that he'd passed away. No, no. Uh, man, I'm not good at this. Oh, right. I'll introduce my crew. Oh, please. First, let me introduce the man who brought you here, our intrepid helmsman, Kane McDougall. It was an honor, Your Highness. Yes, right, right. <laughs> Next, Misa Grandwood, the ship physician. You appear to be under a lot of stress, Princess. You're too thin. <laughs> I get that a lot. And Corey, our electronic warfare specialist. Sorry that I'm still seated. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> our tactical officer, Schnitzer. 
He's a cyborg. How wonderful! Our navigator, Luca. I can see it. No, we don't need you to see anything right now. Hakame, our radar and sensor specialist. Hi there, princess. Sandai, he's in charge of our engine. How are you? And I'm Marika Kato, the trainee captain. Captain, it's improper to call yourself a trainee when we have guests. No, she's an important guest, so I don't think we should be hiding things. <laughs> She'd find out quickly anyway. Right, right. These are the Benton Maru's primary crew members. Whenever there's an important decision to make, they're the ones I usually talk to. Oh, don't worry. Every one of them are all first-rate pirates who worked under my father. I have come here with a request for you space pirates of the Benton Maru who bear a letter of mark. Please help me, I beg of you. A request? What is it? It's about... A ghost ship. I'd like you to find the wandering golden ghost ship. The golden ghost ship? Sorry to interrupt you guys. The Serenity Royal Government has just announced that Princess Greer's Serenity is missing. An investigation is underway to determine her whereabouts and whether she was the victim of foul play. No, I... I swear that I'm here of my own will. Misa... What can you tell me about where this job came from? From the Harold Lloyd Insurance Union, like always. And where are the escort ships guarding the Symphony Angel from? The Serenity Stellar Defense Forces. Three escort ships isn't that many. And I guess they were to protect the princess. Contact Shosan at the Insurance Union. I want to know more about this. What do we do about the princess? If they ask, answer honestly. If not, don't say anything at all. I'm not getting executed for treason against the royal family. You don't have to worry about that. I'm here on this ship of my own will, I promise you. It's not treasonous. It can't be. Don't worry. We won't hurt you. Princess Gruyer, I promise. As captain of the Benton Maru, I willingly accept your task. <sighs> Leave it to us! Tree, it would be in the forest. 
But if you announce where you're hiding her, you limit what your enemy can do. I guess it was smart, but everything that happened after was too sudden. I didn't know you could even make uniforms that fast. Those are tailor-made, right? It's fine. Every single one of the crew worked to respond to the captain's crucial decisions as fast as they could. Ah. Oh. So, what's up? A special document. Special document? It arrived for the Sea of the Morning Star government from the Serenity Royal Government via an underground route. What? When? I thought you'd ask that. Here. The comm logs say it came in sometime after your return to the Sea of the Morning Star yesterday. After we contacted the insurance union? That's right. Be quick to decide and you'll be quick to act. Unexpected, but not bad at all, huh? Wait, but isn't Serenity's response a little too fast? It's like, you know, smells like a rat. You mean it smells fishy? That's what it is. Yeah. Wait, you aren't going to say that I should ask Greer directly about all this suspicious stuff, are you? Is that it? That's right. It's good that your brain started thinking that far ahead. I give you a gold star. I'd rather have a gold star on my tests, please. Not happening. It figures. It figures. Hmm? Gonna have to do it all myself. Ooh. Why are you talking to yourself? Oh, I was just thinking I need to study more. How's it looking this week? With the pirates? Oh yeah, nothing for a while. The princess is here. We've got to escort her, watch out for her, you know how it is. What's your impression of the young princess? Hmm, well I think it looks like things are really hard. She has her position as princess, she can't ever look upset or out of control. But then... She still smiles that way. Want to have her over? Huh? <laughs> That sounds fun, doesn't it? Well, uh, we, we can't! She's a princess! <laughs> Weren't we supposed to not have any work until next week? Sorry, it was sudden. It's inside the Tau system. We'll be back by dinner. Where's Kane? He's your homeroom teacher, isn't he? Yeah, but I got the message after I left homeroom. Uh, oh, there he is. We don't want them arriving before us. Hurry up! You're the one who's late. I almost got stopped by a problem. A problem? <laughs> takes its own sweet time to open. 20 minutes if we rush to the airport. Excuse uh. me. Uh. <laughs> what is this, Kane? Don't blame me. I sent the captain on ahead. And then when I left the classroom, the princess demanded to come. It's a sudden job, right? You're going to investigate a suspicious ship in the Tau system. The job's from the escort fleet's high command. Am I right? Uh, is it? <sighs> I plan to discuss the job on the way to the ship, but that's right. Well, let's hurry. We can discuss the details as we go. I'm going to Florence. <laughs> Driving to the airport could be so stressful. <laughs> you shouldn't say that, because it's not over yet. I was a fool. I'm so sorry. Oh, gosh. No, no. So, shall we discuss the details in the shuttle? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll go over the
the job from the escort fleet's HQ again. I'll skip the exact coordinates, but an unknown ship is due to arrive right on the edge of the tile system. They want us to take a little look-see and find out who it is. The princess says it appears to be a military ship from the Serenity system. It's bringing information on the Golden Ghost ship from the Royal Palace. I see then. Serenity isn't an enemy, nor are they expected to be hostile. But if another military ship enters their territory, regardless of the mission, the escort fleet in the area can't ignore it, nor do they want to make an incident out of it. So they turn to the pirates. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that what I'm seeing suggests more than one ship, and that the ships are engaged in combat. In other words, there's a possibility that the Benton Maru will be caught up in a fight. A fight? Pleasure, princess. <laughs> it's the same way here? The princess was explaining a couple of things to us. Given that, you seem to be having fun. Except for one of you. <laughs> I've been busy. Well, how much of an explanation did you get? From what she said, the princess didn't think there was enough data to capture the Golden Ghost ship, and she sent a message to the palace. That's all I got from her, really. That's it. What else should I have asked for? Huh? To the palace? Directly? Yes! I used a secret method passed down through the Serenity Royal Family. A secret? Well, if you can board the Benton Maru, I guess you can do anything. So, what did you request exactly? I asked them to bring their records on the Golden Ghost ship. I asked for all the information that they had. Honestly, I should have brought them myself, but... I apologize for being so ill-prepared. Well... It's actually considerate. Wouldn't you say so, Greer? Um... That captain's outfit, it, it's very nice. What, this? Yes, it looks very good on you. I'd like to wear it, too. Isn't that nice, Captain? Right, right. Everyone resume your stations. Get going. Hurry. Mush! The wind is harsher than usual. They're nearly here. Benton Maru! Battle station! You're worried about the ship, right? Probably because you heard it will often appear while ships in space are engaged in combat. I believe... I believe in Serenity. And I believe in our captain. Fluctuations off our bow. They're coming. A powerful military class ship is touching down. Pattern match. It's one of those corebacks from the Serenity Defense Fleet. <gasps> oh, wait a second. It's putting out a lot of energy. It's damaged. Radar waves detected. <gasps> so, it is in battle. Multiple fluctuations detected in surrounding area. <gasps> Hold on. What is the Serenity ship fighting? Do you have any idea? We'll know in a second. Multiple military class ships! Where are they from? Identification complete. They're all Serenity Defense Forces. One battleship, four escorts. But why? Captain, your orders. signals from all five ships. Everyone's ready for a firefight. They're serious. Send our transponder data. <laughs> Transmitting transponder information. Now what should I do? Full power to sensors and radar. Log as much information as you can. I don't know what's happening, but make sure everyone knows the Benton Maru is here. Initiating combat logging. Want to transmit an off-site backup just in case? That's the right call. Serenity Defense Forces are putting a lot of power into Jamia. That's so. 
What about the initial core back? I'll put it on your screen. It's approaching Tau Ceti at high speed, heading directly for C of the Morning Star. One core back is running, five are chasing. One battleship, four escorts. Now that they know there's a witness, they'll prevent us from sending data, and then try to shut us up. Which side do we pick? Space pirates are always the good guys. Gruyere! Uh, huh? Uh, yes? Didn't you mention that you'd like to wear my uniform? Uh. Pirates are like soldiers, you see. We have to wear uniforms and undertake missions. You are going to act as captain for me. What do you think? <laughs> Hey, it's a pirate queen! What does that mean? Here! Can we contact the Serenity ships? Even if not, you can make it possible, right? Of course! A pinpoint directional beam, and we'll be whispering right in their ear in no time flat. Okay, ready! Yeah, go on, princess. Go ahead and address your soldiers. It's your ship! <laughs> Right! Pinpoint transmission beam ready! Locked onto all six ships. Fire it! What are you soldiers doing here? I demand an answer! I am through your serenity, legitimate heir to the throne of serenity, and I order you to answer me! The glorious, the glorious serenity defense forces are deceased! Immediately! Failure to comply will be regarded as treasonous! That is all! Damn right it is! <sighs> you did a good job. That's enough. That was... that was kind of exciting. Glad to hear it. What's the situation? Jamming stopped for now. Energy readings are decreasing too. All combat functions have shut down. Guess you scared them pretty bad, didn't ya? We're fortunate they're a well-trained army. Two of them are hailing us. Uh -huh. Two of them? One is the battleship. The other is from that first core back. The transmission from the battleships from their captain. The core back isn't, though. Grand Chamberlain of the Privy Council? It's Yotov. Grand Chamberlain of the Privy Council, Yotov Sifshido. Your dress is finished, so we've come to deliver it. Please try it on. What do we do? Would you put me in touch with Yotov's ship? I swear by the royal line that I will handle any explanations and demands that the Serenity ships require. Please open a channel for me. That's not a good idea. <gasps> Even if they were only firing at other Serenity ships, they were firing weapons inside another star system's absolute defense line. If we withhold all information and let them interpret the situation themselves... <gasps> It'll give us the advantage. That's right. They don't want to make it obvious what's going on here, either. A high-level political decision, huh? I'm so sorry, Gruyere. I know... I know you're the captain, but would you allow my crew to handle this for you? If you wouldn't mind. I'm afraid I'm not terribly accomplished at foreign relations myself. Send a message to the battleship in the princess's name, ordering them to stand down. Then return to formation and stand by. Roger that! As for the Grand Chamberlain aboard the first Korbak, tell them that the princess is on her way to pick up the dress. Right. Kane, you've set the course, right? Yep, we're on our way. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I'm not very captain-like. I mean, I realize I'm speaking to you super casually. Do you know what I mean by casually? Yes, I do. The previous Captain Kato taught me. Oh. In fact, it is my honor to have known two generations of pirate captains. <laughs> Please continue to address me that way. <laughs> Roger.
Jotov. Can you tell who that is? Grand Chamberlain Yotov. I'm certain of it. Behind him is Squad Commander Catherine of the Bodyguards. Oh, impossible! Could they have stolen that ship? What? Are they that strong? Yes, very strong. No weapons or energy signatures detected from them. They're unarmed, but their bearings indicate that they are highly trained. I'll meet them with real weapons, not weapons for show. I'd like to keep this as peaceful as possible. They're here. Then go ahead and open the door. I am Grand Chamberlain of the Privy Council. My name is Yotov Sivshido. I am Marika Kato, Captain of the Benton Maru. And I have brought Princess Gruir Serenity. I'm glad you're safe. If you're here, then that means... That... Nothing has happened at the palace, your highness. It's been quite peaceful since you left for your study abroad. So the two most useless of the people there have undertaken this mission. Do not worry. The palace is quite safe, princess. I see. I understand. Thank you. Then show me, please. Yes, princess. Right. <laughs> Thank you for this, ma'am. Please take care of the princess for us. <laughs> What's wrong? I've never seen one in person. Hmm? That's a container used by the royal family. You could probably buy a luxury liner with one of those. Huh? What? Marika-san, take this. This should contain all the information the Serenity forces have on the Golden Ghost ship. Serenity power struggles. I'm surprised you know about that. I know all about it. That's why I'm staying here and researching. I just came to this planet because my dad asked me to buy him some tea and alcohol. And some parfaits? At the lamp house? Mm. I see. I guess it's become kind of famous. But I think it might be a little different than what you think it is. I mean, really, after all... I know that. Only those directly involved know the truth about it. My father's crew was hired to search for the Serenity ghost ship as well. Huh? The job came to us via an underground source, so the real client for this operation is unknown. A ghost ship? The Golden Ghost Ship of Serenity. Find it, and eliminate anyone who tries to get in our way. I didn't read the official contract, but they want us to eliminate anyone else looking for it in outer space. I think... So that's what we're up against. Seems crazy. Well, thanks a lot for telling me. You understand we don't know where the job originated. I'm just seeking more information. Oh, then did you go to the middle school? Did you see the princess? Not interested. Oh, come on! Mm -hmm. Come on! I'm not into that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, come in! Uh, yeah! Um, excuse me. Gruyere? 
pleasure to meet you. I am Gru, your serenity. An honor, princess. Hey, you're really into it, Chiaki-chan. Don't call me that! <laughs> oh. oh, it's Chiaki Korehara! Chiaki How are you, Chiaki-chan? Chiaki-chan! I am Gru, your serenity. And here we go again. I am the club president, Jenny Doolittle. We've actually met before. I'm amazed you remember me. We were introduced by my father at the opening of the new Arnold Junction route on your planet. Well, yeah, that's correct. Hugh and Doolittle Interstellar Transportation has been good to my nation. Oh, it's a different world. So what brings a princess to the high school yacht club? Is there something our members can do for you? Well, um, actually, according to information that I've acquired, it seems one of the senior yacht club members is a master of the illegal skill, faking attendance. <gasps> oh my. Faking attendance? Who told you? Well, it was a place called the Lamp House, which serves lovely tea and parfaits. It was her. You see, the Yacht Club has all kinds of talented people there. You'd be totally surprised what they can do. I'm sure there's bound to be one of them that can help you. <laughs> Mommy, what do you think we are anyway? I think she has the right idea. Hmm? I don't think there are many high school girls who can win at electronic warfare on their first practice cruise. Oh, so you're defending mommy now? I'm not defending her. I'm just saying that if you need something illegal at this high school, this club is the place to go. But it's kind of depressing since she was sent here to fake attendance. Is there a problem? Princess, may I ask if there's a reason you wish to sabotage your classes? I can't share the details, but... In the future, I may need to leave school for a short or even extended period of time. I'm sorry. During that time, I'd like people to think I'm still attending Hakuo Academy. <laughs> Doesn't this concern you as well? Huh? The princess will be accompanying you, right? I see. If I understand this, you will be with Marika-san for her work. Yes. Then that's absolutely no problem at all. Luckily, there's going to be a practice cruise over the post-exam break. It will be a chance to send off the senior year students. Huh? When did we plan that? I just now decided it. And so, from now on, Brewer Son is a Yacht Club member. What? <gasps> will that work for you, Brewer? Yes, thank you very much. And, uh... What is it? <laughs> I want to say thank you for calling me Gruyer. We have upperclassmen and underclassmen, but basically everyone in the Yacht Club is equal. <laughs> nice to meet you, Gruyer. Nice to meet you, Gruyer-san. Hi. Oh, hey there. Oh, thank Welcome. you, everyone. Welcome. I look forward to working with you. All together. Let's start by taking Gruyer to the simulation dome. <laughs> also very convenient for you, isn't it? Yes, it is, but I... That way you can focus on your studies. Yeah. I took a look at your second semester grades. They're terrible, even if they are getting better. Hey, wait, have you been hacking again? Let's all do our best, Marika-san. At our studies, at our club, and at being a pirate. Oh, yes, I'll do my best. Should be interesting. Hmm? I'm back! <sighs> Welcome back! What? Where's dinner? We're eating out tonight. Oh! What should I wear then? That outfit's fine. Now, let's go. You haven't been under the airport in a long time, have you? Oh, it's just like it was. This is the place. Oh, I think I remember this. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? It's 
been a while, boss. Everyone's already here. Do you remember her? This is my daughter, Marika. <laughs> Uh, hi there. Uh, don't knock anything over. No. Uh, hey, who's that? The manager of the cafeteria district. In other words, the airport's most powerful person. I knew it. Food is strong. There you are. Gruyere, are you okay? Uh, yes. Daime is still watching over the Binton Maru, just in case. So this is everyone. Then let's begin. So did you analyze the data? Finally. The royal family's data is highly protected and there's a lot of it. It took me a long time to organize it all. The Golden Ghost Ship of Serenity. In reality, is the first colony ship to carry passengers. It was made long ago, before modern technologies like inertial control and faster than light speeds existed. Interstellar flight would take years, so cold sleep was a necessity. They probably made all kinds of modifications to allow for a journey of many light years, which would take entire generations. This is exactly how it looked the last time a search team found it. <gasps> so that's the ghost ship! Big, huh? Who knows how many towns could fit in that? This is a plot of all sightings of the Golden Ghost Ship over the past 200 years. From these calculations, we can predict its probable route in Bingo. Hey, hey. Dark nebula, overlapping black holes, dwarf star clusters, and protoplanets. Navigating would be difficult. That's right. That's why not everyone can see it. No one knows why this route was chosen anyway. It's a total mystery. Uh, what are you doing? It doesn't really matter now why it's a ghost ship, does it? Our client is here, and we have all the information we can get. All that remains is to act. We don't want to keep the chef waiting. Year. Even if we set out, we may not find the ghost ship. Is that all right? I believe in you, Marika-san, and in the golden ghost ship. <laughs> oh. Are you finished talking? I'd like to serve the food this year. Please do. Bring on the drink. So the pirate ship is carrying a princess to look for a ghost ship, huh? The jobs these days are a lot more romantic than the ones I used to get. <laughs> Let's just hope it doesn't turn into an action movie or a huge spectacle or something.
well done. I'm told these pirates have a new captain. And according to all reports, this new captain happens to be a young girl. There hasn't been a female pirate since Blaster Ririka. Ah, I'd love to get a look at her myself. Yeah, and there we go. Video footage from the enemy ship. Top-rate service. Very nice work. Here is absolutely insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. Perfect place for a ghost ship. <laughs> There's a break in the storm. Minus three minutes, two seconds off the bow. Get us there. Output stable. All ready. Roger. are allowed to work. Both of you, grab some food and get to bed. But me too? It's included among the Hakuo Academy rules. Students are limited to an eight-hour workday. I don't make the rules, I just enforce them, ladies. Night-night. Let's eat. Oh, sorry. We don't have a personal chef to cook, but it's pretty good stuff, don't you think? I'm not concerned about the food. Everyone's searching for the ghost ship while I'm just sitting here, relaxing. That's just... It's bothering you? Yeah. I'm supposed to be the captain, but the adults are still protecting me. And it's the same for you. So, I understand how you feel. Oh, I'm sorry I compared myself to you. No, I'm happy. Huh? For someone to say that they're like me, I mean, that makes me happy, you know? <laughs> I wonder what Chiyoki-chan is doing right now. <gasps> no way! I'm not enjoying this! <sighs> Maybe I'll adjust this part a little bit. Go from here to here, and then set a course. Ugh. 
So, the captain's battle is tomorrow, huh? Okay. One more time. all night, in case you didn't know, that is. Uh, then shouldn't I have stayed up all night, too? The Binton Maru isn't in such bad shape that it requires its underage captain here overnight. Well, uh, you just make decisions when you need to. Relaxing is part of your job, like eating is part of mine. Right. So, what's the situation? I'll give you the abridged version. There are numerous observation buoy arrays set here by the Serenity search teams, which are still active. The 17 search teams created a fairly wide observation network, which continues to compile detailed data. Is that all you needed to know? So, isn't that awfully lucky? And the authorization oh. code? You need an authorization code to access them. Why didn't you wake me up? Well, let's see here. Cut it. Easy. What? Of course, it took a lot of prep work, especially in the middle of this storm. It kept Schnitzer and Hayakumi up all night. They finally went to sleep a little while ago. I think they're exhausted. Oh, so that's where they are. But it's strange. Hmm? Search Team 17 occurred 15 years ago. And the princess is 13 years old. Yeah. Using your authorization code on a network that dates from before your birth is pointless. But I entered it anyway, just in case. Your full name and biometrics. And you're saying it worked? Mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. A name and genetic pattern that works regardless of when it's used. I guess the royal family may really be special. Are you born that way? I believe so. That's why the royal family was able to maintain Serenity's independence. At least I think. Well, um, how's the network doing? Find any data on the ghost ship? The difference is like night and day. See how clear it is? Wow. What's this? Not sure. But probably multiple spaceships. Battleship class, too. They want the same thing we do. I was going to trade places with Chiaki-chan and slip away, but apparently it won't work. What should we do? Pursue? No, not now. They're not close enough to worry about. If we want the same thing, we just end up fighting. Roger. Okay, then I'll keep analyzing the data. I'll... Thanks. <laughs>
blast to all what's on the ship's hull. If one of those got inside the ship, it would be game over for all of us. The missiles I launched ahead have become misaligned with the Benton Morrow. It'll work next time. I'll have the data for correction. Next time we'll be somewhere else. We are not in such danger that you need to panic. Stop whining. Antimatter missiles to clear the stardust out of our path, but they were out of alignment. I see. So where's our treasure? The explosions still haven't died down. Wait a second. This is a mess. Looking pretty stormy, huh? Hang on. This spatial irregularity doesn't originate here. It's interference from some other space region. Another space region? Should we go there? Jeez. Huh? The source is in motion. As it moves, the spatial irregularity is fading a little bit, I think. Can we follow it? Nope. We can't catch it from normal space. Ugh, this is not gonna work. Not a total loss. If I align the data we just received with what we got from the observation buoys, I should be able to predict the next irregularity. We can't get ahead of it, but we'll be able to follow faster. Now what's happening? I thought they'd show up. Different energy signal this time. Radar signal detected. All crew to battle stations now! scanning, they'll find us. Can we slip past? Another radar signal. Sorry, we can't escape. I'm reading across field. What's across field? Radar scanning over the same space from two different directions. Basically, it's just using radar from two sides. Launching decoys. Go! I plotted a random course to confuse them. But if they're careful enough to use a cross field, I don't know whether a decoy will be effective. Third signal spotted. They probably split their fleet in advance prior to returning to normal space. They know to use numbers to their advantage, so they're going to be tough on us. Heavy storms. A fleet split into multiple groups. The closest one is... It's signal two! An escort class. Probably two of them. Our relative speed is negative. They're accelerating on an approach course. Understood. No more running. <gasps> Reverse course! Roger that! Before we go, though, let's greet the two nearest ships. All crew, prepare for anti-ship warfare. Shall we launch the first shot? Or wait for them to fire. It doesn't matter if they fire or not. Get as close as possible, then fire a fully charged dispersal shot. She's going to damage their sensors and armor to prevent them from following us further. Smart girl. The blood of Captain Kata flows through her. The blood of the Captain. Okay, ready anytime. Benton Maru, let's go! An approach this close in anti ship combat is unheard of. Jamming initiated. Don't mess this up. Leave it to me. Engines to full. We'll head straight through them. Is it really necessary for us to jump directly into the firing ranges of those ships? We're gonna win. Because we're doing it. Turret 1, target Alpha on starboard. Turret 2, target Bravo on port side. Attack will proceed as planned. A full blast at our closest point. Ready targeting in advance. Enemy ships. Identified. Corvette class escorts. Serenity ships. No way! No change to our plan. We fire regardless of whether they do. <sighs> Quickly, with 
following? Oh, no, they're not. They didn't expect us to fire once and withdraw like we did. If we'd been serious about fighting, we'd have done something smarter. Yeah, Roger. Do you know if our beams hit them? They did. Even if we didn't penetrate their armor, we badly damaged their sensor arrays and surveillance equipment. Okay. <sighs> Next time, they'll come after us for real. Um... Do you think that it's too late to contact those Korvac ships? Why would you ask that? Well, if I tell them that I'm on board... If they're Serenity ships, they shouldn't be targeting us. Please, just let me contact them. No, not now. Listen to me, Captain. This is a misunderstanding, otherwise the Serenity ship would never fire on me. We must correct the confusion as soon as... Corey, has anyone tried to contact the Benton Maru? No hails or FTL comms this entire time. <sighs> After that last skirmish, they know who we are. But they haven't attempted contact. You know what that means, right? But it's all a misunderstanding! If they knew that I was on board, I... <sighs> If it's a misunderstanding, things should go better next time we run into them. But I'm sorry. The Benton Maru is a pirate ship, and we have to consider the enemy's logic and where they're coming from. But Captain... Right now, you're supposed to be aboard a Hakuo Academy practice cruise, remember? And the Benton Maru should be engaged in its usual piracy. <gasps> the fact that you're on this ship is a powerful card in any negotiation with the other ships. So please, keep it in reserve. You are Princess Gruyere Serenity, aren't you? Very well then. Thank you, Captain. But I... I'm glad that I came to this ship. <laughs> Sure. 
A kid's spacesuit, huh? <laughs> oh, there's that one. Let's go. Um, we may not be able to dock directly, so there's no harm in learning. You're going to fulfill your responsibilities, right? Understood. into a triangular prison around a single location, meaning that they have a good idea of the next space-time quake's location. They must have gathered this information during the last mission. That's all I can figure out. Any indication they're concerned with us? Nothing obvious that I see. Well, what do you think, though? What is it possible for the fleet to do now? Let's see. If each escort uses its FTL drive on the source of that space-time quake, the odds are favorable that they can drag the Golden Ghost ship here. I think it'll work. So it's finally time. Which means the Benton Maru's gonna head straight into the midst of the waiting fleet. Or at least it looks that way from where I'm sitting. Yep, that's it. So, what do you think, Captain? Huh? What? You know... I just wondered what you were planning, given that you asked the princess to leave the bridge. I'm the captain of the Benton Maru. I have to make the decisions that will protect this ship. <laughs> Thus, the ship's safety is my first priority. Even if it's a job from the Serenity Royal Family's princess, if things get bad, we run because we can't do anything if we're dead. But still... When I see the way a smart girl like Gruyere seems so troubled, well, I can't help but think she must be thinking of something really bad happening. <laughs> something bad, huh? I don't know what it is, and the Benton Maru's safety is my top priority, but I'd like to do what I can for her. So I'd like you to do something for me. What is it? Appears we're going to jump. Attention crew! This is your captain, Marika. Anyway, let's continue. The Benton Maru is now preparing for FTL jump. We'll jump once we've compiled the data. By landing, we may be engaged in a firefight with a battleship. Everyone, be ready! <gasps> she really should take these announcements more seriously. I'm not sure, but it's possible our captain found a way to catch the ghost ship after all. What does she mean by a firefight with a battleship? Should I return to the bridge, do you think? Now that she's decided on her course, there won't be anything you can do, even if you go back. More importantly, your first job is to master wearing a spacesuit, Princess. Aren't you planning to board the ghost ship? I guess you're right. Benton Maru, jump! Output high and steady. Benson Maru, FTL shop! Watch out for heavy turbulence. We're heading into a space-time quake. I'll see what I can do. Touching down momentarily. Sources. No, a single ring-shaped 
one. What is it? Hell if I know. What are these numbers? Is a neutron star going to jump out at us? Captain? 
sorry. Combat systems aren't online yet. I was getting the ship systems back online first. I need a few more minutes. It's fine. Well, Greer, there's your golden ghost ship. Check it out. <gasps> Bringing comm systems back online. I'm starting with normal comm. Haley, thought so. Got one. From who? There's only one group who'd send us an emergency message in this situation. From Serenity Defense Forces. Flagship Queen Serendipity. Sender Gunhilda Serenity. Huh? Why don't we take a closer look at this? <gasps> From what I can see here, it has a designated recipient. It says, Grew your serenity on board the Benton Maru. Grunhilda? So they couldn't be bothered to greet the captain first, huh? They have guts. Grunhilda Serenity. Eighth princess of the Serenity royal family. <gasps> My younger sister. She came all this way to look for the ghost ship. Gruyere, you're up! Uh, you're going to answer the message, aren't you? Then you should be sitting in the captain's chair when you do. Get up here! Yes, ma'am. Kane, get us to the ghost ship as soon as possible. We need to beat them there. I'm on it, Captain. Opening channel. Please leave, big sister. Oh, her sister's really pretty too. What are you looking at? You're fully aware of what we must do, aren't you? Please leave. What is the meaning of that uniform, Grunhilda? You know what it means for a member of the royal family to fly a battleship in uniform, Hilda. A ruler must lead. Willingly from the battle's front line. Of course I am aware. This is why I'm doing it. And why I'm aboard the Queen's Serendipity. Grunhilda, you're being manipulated, aren't you? I am not, big sister. I am on the ship of my own free will. I don't want to hear anything from someone who has lowered themselves to the level of a pirate. You listen to me right now. I will not allow you to insult this ship or its crew. Do you hear me? Stop your ship! Queen Serendipity's gun ports are already open and targeting your pirate ship! I'm asking you one more time to just leave! Okay, Grunhilda! I'm going on ahead! If you wish to stop me, then let's meet inside the ghost ship! Big sister... High energy readings! An attack? Not quite. An omnidirectional high output radar scan from the ghost ship. <sighs> I thought it was supposed to be dead. Maybe we woke it up. It's a traditional name for Serenity ships. The rest is an ID code. 
Our response will determine if it recognizes us as a friend or foe. Princess, can you handle this? Yes, of course I can. Six pre-drives around us. Hurry, Kane! We need to dock with the ghost ship and pronto! It'll be close, but I'll get it done. Withdrawing all antenna masts. We're going in backwards! <laughs> look well I'm not seeing any major damage on the monitors here but I'm definitely sure you scratched the stern up pretty bad the hatch is closing <gasps> the Benton Maru is locked in I can see that so princess we caught your ghost ship or maybe it caught us but for better or for worse we're here Thank you very much, Captain. <laughs> I can handle the rest, okay? I must attend to something within the ghost ship. But could you wait somewhere safe? And I promise I'll come back here as soon as I can, okay? Then we'll wait here. Uh, no, I'm happy, but... There's an enemy fleet outside. The safest place is inside the ghost ship. But, Captain... <laughs> what was that? We're shaking. Space-time quake. Not good. We're going back into subspace? Subspace? What? Lock down the ship! Prepare for jump! Launching the ship's anchor. When the ghost ship finishes its jump, I'm coming with you, okay? But if I told you that I'm going alone, you wouldn't listen, would you? It's the captain's job to protect the crew and passengers. I can't send you out there all alone. Ghost ship is jumping. I'm 
going to jump. Like a fairy tale prince and princess. Can we open it? It isn't a complicated lock, don't worry, just give me a chance, Captain. Can we connect to the ghost ship? <gasps> Corey's on the bridge, working on it. It's surprising the first time you see it. You may know intellectually that cyborgs don't need spacesuits, but... <laughs> <laughs> Power cable from the Benton Morrow is connected. Akume? What is it? Turn it on. Gotcha, big guy. Starting with the standard 200. What do we do? Up the power a bit? No, this is fine. On the other side of the hatch, you'll have 0.8 atmosphere, 24% oxygen. No poisonous gases or radiation so far. Bridge to Captain Marika. Can you hear me? We're about to go inside the ghost ship. Find anything? Yeah, several things. The ghost ship has two landing decks that I see. And it looks like there are signs of a ship infiltrating from another separate deck. Given the ship's layout, it's hard to imagine that battleship simply docked. But I don't know how many people they brought with them. I can't really tell. It'd be nice if we could connect to the ghost ship's host computer. Thank you. Nice work. Keep it up, okay? Roger. You heard that, right, Greer? Let's hurry! The air's alright. You can remove your helmet. <sighs> okay, Greer, where should we go? Uh, we aren't heading for the engine or the bridge first? We'll let the Serenity folks handle that. They've sent plenty of search teams, so they must know about those places. How irresponsible. Well, we are pirates, after all. We should hurry to the treasure. Understood. It isn't working. Do we need another safe cracker? I think it's going to be fine. Leave this to me. We're near the engine and power couplings. From where I sit, these look like the buffer tanks for maintaining the ship's atmospheric pressure. Or maybe the circulation system for the ship's disinfectants. Aren't the cold sleep units at the ship's center? <laughs> Told you we could leave it to them. Oh, uh, yeah. If the lights are on, you can assume the monitoring system is powered on as well, Captain. We need to be exceptionally careful now. So, they're already aware of where we are, huh? Guess it can't be helped, can it? Right. Universal value. What do you think it would be? Universal value? Something truly irreplaceable. Precious metals are valuable, but with enough time and effort, you can make as much as you like. Art or culture? That's true. Even in the distant future, as long as civilization is still civilized, art and history will retain their value, right? Civilization, huh? It's pretty old. Huh? This is amazing! What is it? Some weird monitor? A mechanical display. Each pixel contains tiny gears and miniature crankshafts. 
It displays text by rapidly switching among the three primary colors in black and white. Never seen one working quite like this, though. Go on. It's going to need the name of a royal family member. You can enter the name one letter at a time. Beyond this door is the temperature-controlled, low-gravity environment. Is that correct? Exactly, Princess. It's pressurized, but most of the atmosphere is nitrogen gas, with a minor amount of inert gases. Perfect for long-term preservation. So we finally get to see our treasure? I think what you're all expecting is... isn't to be found aboard this ship. But there's treasure, right? I'll open the door. for a treasure chest. This isn't the right place? I think the other storerooms will be similar. What about the art? The paintings? Didn't they wish to preserve this stuff so badly they used nitrogen? It's true that the Serenity Royal family kept the pre-FTL cultural artifacts on the Golden Ghost ship, but, but nearly all were taken out and sold during various past economic crises. So that's what those search teams were for? Yes. Already learned how to do it? I watched Hakumi. Wow, I guess it's the royal blood, isn't it, huh? time ago. It would have asked for a drop of blood, but not now. this again. Are you planning to shut the hatch and leave us out once you were through? 
I gave up on that idea whenever Schnitzer opened up the big hat. <laughs> Is this the important thing you were talking about? Yes. Oh my, how old is this? I've never seen a plant of this magnitude before. Wait a minute, do you know what it is? May I tell them? Mm -hmm. It's an artificial womb. <gasps> the part that looks like a bud with all the cords is an artificial womb, where fertilized eggs grow along with the equipment to maintain it. The central block is a system for coding and tuning the genes. Am I right, princess? You could tell all of that just by sight. Doctors are terrifying, aren't they? I made up half of that. I just thought I'd see what you'd say. I figured it was something like that. This is where the royal family was born, isn't it? I'm reading another signal. Get ready for the schnitzer. Understood.
bio plant is already finished. Look, don't worry. <gasps> what do you mean? The rose spring has dried up. It was drained dry of genetic samples and bio cells. No, no. I take that back. It had one more left. One left? Uh, is that... The last member of the Serenity Royal family to be born from this spaceship. The baby was slightly premature. Say hello to your little sister. just in time to save it. So everything worked out. Any later, and it would have stayed frozen, unable to be revived. So you saved it. Everything works out when you're a pirate, right? to the serendipity. Fortunately, Yotov's pretty smart. You did it that long ago? Then Hilda and I were being deceived this entire time? We didn't really deceive you. We just didn't tell you. Talk about romantic. 
About. Being popular is a good thing. It means people like you. Rurika-san! <laughs> oh, come to think of it, Rurika-san. Did you recently change work shifts? You've been home a lot. Is it wrong for a mom to be at home? No, that isn't it. But you used to say that it's really busy at the control tower. Did you ask to change your shift? Well, you know, I thought it was about time for me to change my job. So I took some vacation time while I look for another job. Huh? I'm confident that you can make it on your own now. So I thought I might have some fun and do something I enjoy as well. Oh. Shouldn't I? No, you should. Uh, I'm doing what I want. I mean, you should too. I see. Thank you. You really have grown up, haven't you? It makes me want to fight even harder. Fight? Oh, it's nothing. What time should I wake you up tomorrow? Don't worry. Starting tomorrow, I'm a second year student. I'll get myself up, so you don't need to wake me up anymore. <laughs> you will. Yep. Ah! I overslept! I overslept! Oh, how can I do this on the first day of stupid stuff? <laughs> also joined us as well. And that's how it is. Oh. I got really jealous when my sister told me how absolutely wonderful all of the people at this place are. I look forward to studying with you. Uh, uh. <sighs> Those two are in middle school, but since they're visiting students from the royal family, our club is being asked to look after them. Oh my. Will that be alright? I don't know why it wouldn't be alright. Sioko and Sasha are pretty grown up. What? You're leaving it up to them? As club president, I'll do what I can. More than anything else, it's fun. Marika's here as well. <laughs> This'll be a fun year for the club. I can feel it. Take good care of everyone, Rin. Yeah. By the way, how's your recruiting going? My knitting club's doing okay. I'm sure you're getting tons of girls wanting to join, right? Just the opposite. They're all just watching from a distance. Huh? Why? People found out the yacht club can be pretty rough. In a way, they're scared of us. I guess I understand. Yeah, all of you do have reputations. There's you, and then the club president, Rin, is a famous hacker. And then there's a princess, and everyone else, you know? Mm -hmm. Who knows what they do in their spare time? I can see someone being intimidated. That's the problem. The president says not to worry about it, Then but... you don't have a choice, do you? Put on your pirate outfit and go recruiting! Uh, I refuse! Uh, oh, excuse me. We're closed for today! Uh... Okay, lock up for me. Will do. See you tomorrow. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come by when it's so late. Mm -mm. No, it's fine. 
The manager left for the day anyway. You look good in that uniform. I've worn this longer than I have my other uniform. Do you really think so? Yeah, it's cute. But, you know, even with all of that, I think you'll always be a pirate. Here you go. Marika-san's special chocolate parfait. It might not look great, but it still tastes good. Chiaki-chan likes it, too. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Told ya. You really are crazy, Gru here. You're supposed to be a princess, right? Just wandering around out here. What if something happened? I'm really sorry, but I just wanted to be able to thank you properly. Thank me? I'm the one who wanted to thank you. You even gave me a medal. I can't express my thanks with just a medal. I wanted to talk to you alone. And this was the only way that I could think of. But that's dangerous. I don't know who might be after you. Isn't it the same for you? Uh, well, yeah, but the... I'm safe by your side. I believe that, anyway. It's true. There is a non-aggression pact regarding Marika Kato. But I don't know who decided on it. <laughs> Until that serenity was on the brink of war. Some people wanted to have a system-wide war of independence, but then some people wanted to maintain the royal family. There were others who wanted to disband it, though. Everything got muddled, and finally they split into conservatives and reformists. My sister and I were being manipulated by both sides. That isn't true. You came to the Benton Maru for help yourself. In the end, you're the one who saved us, Marikasan. Huh? After all, you're the one who told us to take the Golden Ghost ship back to Serenity in the first place. And now Serenity is about to make a vast change. I just came up with the idea. I only thought it would be faster to show them the real thing than to try to explain it. I'm jealous of you. Huh? Oh. This is the administrator's ID ring I used to disable the Benton Maru security. The administrator's ID? Whose? It was your father's. Captain Gonzaman Kato. Huh? The captain's ID ring? I see. That explains it. How you were able to get aboard. I'm sorry I never told you. You're giving me this? But my dad gave it to you, didn't he? Are you sure? Well, you're the Benton Maru's captain now, aren't you? So I'm returning it to you. No. Huh? I want to give it to you. Please accept it. I will then. Hey. Yeah? What was my dad? What was he like? He was a wonderful person. You're also wonderful, Marika-san. Hmm. Boy, that brings back memories. Mm -hmm. Marika-san, you've seen this before. Normally, you'd leave that thing locked in a safe. You could use it to control the whole Benton Maru yourself if you needed to. <laughs> I'd rather avoid that situation. The Serenity Kingdom has been... Serenity is going to have a unified Congress. Each system will receive more self-rule and the royal family's power will be diminished. Perhaps the people, seeing their ancestors ship up close like this, is what's bringing the whole system to its senses. I'm sure Gruyere is behind it. Hmm. If that's true, it's amazing. Serenity is changing. That's right, Gruyere came back here. I'm sure it was. Virika-san? What's that? Can I ask her to come over and visit?
Why do you think you're away from me? Yeah, yo, yeah, Shitomi. I'll do my best. I'm Natalia <laughs> Grinnerth. Nice to meet you all. We got some new members after all. I heard that girl Natalia won all the middle school solo pilot tournaments. Uh, I'm I Hoshimiya. Um, nice to meet you all. Oh yeah, she might work we out. We have an elite few joining us this year. First year middle school. Grunhilda Serenity. So we have some new members. Welcome! Huh? We are the outlaws of the Yacht Club! Grin, <laughs> <laughs> you're scaring them. Well, that's a good starting place. They'll get used to all of us. They will have to sooner or later, I guess. But will they ever get used to you? <laughs> okay then, ladies. Let's get this show on the road. First years, follow the second years to the simulator room. Third years, we need to start planning our next practice cruise. Right! right. <laughs> I go with them as well? Yes. Yeah? To your home? Really? Yeah. I'm sure it's nothing compared to your palace, but I think it's pretty nice. But I was thinking we could have dinner at my place. How about it? Sure. With pleasure. Um, you don't have to wear a dress or anything, okay? Normal clothes are fine. Grunhilde, you should come too. Rurikasan, how are you supposed to cut kombu seaweed? It's just for the soup stock, so it really doesn't matter how you cut it as long as you do. But if you cut it too thin, it'll be tough to get it out, and we don't want that now. Oh. Are you making sukadani? Well, whatever. Put it in the pot for me. Keep the heat on low. Oh. Coming! Come in! Thanks for coming. You have some pretty serious security. Yeah, I guess it's because of my job. Welcome, Grunhilde. Hello there. The captain asked the princesses over for dinner? She's invited them over for a special Kato family dinner. Is that really a good idea? Serenity Squad Commander Catherine. Remember her? Ah, the hot one who didn't talk much. She has a military security force overseeing the house even as we speak. Hmm. And the captain's non-aggression pack should still hold up, so no one is going to bother them. I wonder what food made by Blaster Rerica would taste like. Well, is it any good? An interesting question. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Right, Misa? A long time ago, when she came aboard this ship, she was a terrible cook. Her food was so bad it gives me the shakes. Just remembering it. Indeed. Her cooking almost killed the previous crew on several occasions. <laughs> but a while ago, when we visited, it was delicious. It seemed like it was cooked by a different person. It actually resembled food. I can't believe that she's the same Lyrica she once was. It's time for some piracy! <laughs> Indeed. Maybe she was a different person. Not the pirate Blaster Lyrica, but the mother, Lyrica Kato. She must have worked really hard for her daughter. However, I think it's nearly time. What is this? Patafu happens to be Rurika-san's best dish. Oh, it smells good, and it looks delicious. <laughs> no need to flatter me. I do think you'll like it, though. Mm. Broiled fish paste, konjac yam, radish, fish cakes. Well, let's eat, shall we? Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's.
Mary to make you help with the dishes. Oh, it's not a problem. I did all the cleaning and laundry while I was on the bench in Maru. Uh huh? Marikasan said that princes are not, since I was on a pirate ship. I had to work. <laughs> did she? She told you that? We were born from the rose spring, oh, an artificial womb. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on the news. A bloodline created by the correct combination of the correct gene. We were told that that was what the royal family needed. And you tried to change that, didn't you? Things are changing. Not just for myself, but for everyone in Serenity. And we're heading toward the future. So things have to change. Leaving aside the country, what will you do? I'm sure you still have your royal obligations, but as a royal princess, what will you do? To be honest with you, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. She gave it to me as an apology for feeding me the hot mustard. Did you have a good time? It was an experience unlike any I've ever had. If we both stay here for a while longer, I'll have lots of different experiences like that. I just know it. Yes, that's right. Marika Kato. I think I understand it now. Why you like her so much. I see. I'm really embarrassed. It's a big universe, but I don't think too many people in it have fed hot mustard to princesses. I'm glad it didn't become an international incident. <laughs> yeah. But I bet you had fun. Maybe I'll go back to being a nurse after all. Kane, what about you? I'll pass. I'm all done teaching high school girls. Oh? But they all loved you so much. Am I right, Captain? Yeah. I bet the Yacht Club would welcome you, teacher. Good grief. Lucky. You want to try? <laughs> what about you, Schnitzer? You could be a gym teacher. No, thanks. So, what's today's job? According to the dossier, it's something the authorities can't really make public, but they can't trust a civilian transport with it. So they're going to rely on our crew. The usual cargo transport job, I guess. Hmm. Research class electrical components, prototype weapons. Huh? Bio container? Cat monkeys? Perhaps for some experiment. Or maybe for a zoo. I'm not really sure. Oh! I know! This Sunday, I can take Gruyere and Grunhilde to the zoo! Okay. I can't wait. I can't wait!